Oh! Oh, I... Oh, I... Uh, man, I didn't, I didn't see you there. I didn't see you guys. Welcome. Come, please, come come in. W won't you come in? Welcome to the Wolfden Podcast, everybody. How you doing? It's good to see you guys. Will, how are you? Good. Robert, how are you? I'm great. Why did you call me Robert? <laughs> I don't know. I felt like being proper today. Uh, I don't I, know. I, Fuck I, you, man. I, I, <laughs> I posted something that had... Um, my name oh no you know i posted my birthday cake which had bobby on yes. it people were very mm. confused about that i don't know why but then today i posted something that said robert and people went to town with that oh, so man. i thought you were just bandwagoning on the weird no, names no, for I, bob trend no you know i saw i remember seeing that tweet and um, i didn't even phase me because i know you as robert bobby Bob, that guy over there. Bill, uh, Will, Bill, Hunter, Will, whatever. Hunter. Yeah. Whatever names our mother would throw at us yes. when she was mad. Sal, sometimes. None of us yeah. are named that. It just happens. <laughs> yep. Anyway, uh, guys, welcome. I'm glad you're all here. Uh, I am drinking out of my new Wolf Den mug that was provided oh, to us by Trouble. There you go. Uh, I, I made. Oh, I wanted to show this. I made a. Uh, I made. I made a. I made a latte in it. Uh, it's an oat milk latte, but I put orange syrup in it, and oh. a little and some chocolate syrup, and a and some chocolate Ooh. shavings on the top. Yeah, it is. Look at that bad boy, oh baby. Fancy. Yeah. And I had to take a picture of it because. Naturally, I almost finished it already. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you, Treble, for the tumblers and whatnot. Uh, anyway, we also have something. Well, apparently, we got a bunch of crap in the P.O. box. We're going to uh, unbox later. Yeah, um, A bunch of three. <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, but. We got a lot to talk about today. For example, uh, yes. the, twi the, the the GameCube is now 20 years old but also this guy right here oh my god you have it just next to you well this is the gamecube i keep in my desk oh i'm so case, sorry case i want to play video games while i'm bored at work that's the um, desk cube the desk cube yes uh but since i switched to a non-hdmi monitor i haven't been hasn't been connected so i gotta figure that out uh yeah, I, I, this, is my, this is my desk cube <laughs> We also got to talk about the Switch getting a price drop, potentially. Uh, yeah. There was a PlayStation showcase that happened last week that we need to talk about. Uh, there's a software update coming tomorrow for the PlayStation 5 that we need to talk about. There is some retro news, the analog pocket. Uh, we also got... Mm -hmm. uh, we got to talk about the Epic versus Apple ruling. The, the thrilling we conclusion to, to Epic. We got to try to. That Those are like the best articles I can find that like some things up and it's still a lot i'm also getting some breaking news will this is very important Nintendo Twitter. uh i guess we should talk about this now why not it's breaking news okay Let's what is it. it nintendo of america tweeted uh the latest nintendo switch update is now available including the ability to pair bluetooth devices for audio output will it's been there the whole time they could have just oh, fucking whoa. given it to us. Oh. It's only been four years, but here we are. We have Bluetooth audio I on the am, Switch. I am legitimately shocked and amazed by this. For more I information, yeah. including restrictions on some features <laughs> while using Bluetooth audio, please visit the support page. Wow. Pair device, Bluetooth audio. Uh, that's it. There it is. Uh, I mean, wait, can I just do this? Can I just, you know what? I'm going to freaking update my Switch right now. Yeah. Looks uh, like we're uploading a Clips Channel video today, boys. <laughs> how to pair and manage Bluetooth audio devices. In this article, you will learn how to connect, disconnect, and remove saved Bluetooth audio devices on your Nintendo Switch. Important. Up to two wireless controllers can be connected to a Nintendo Switch system uh, while using Bluetooth audio. 
you will not be able to pair additional wireless controllers until you disconnect the Bluetooth audio device. Bluetooth audio will be disconnected during local communication, such as when a local wireless multiplayer game. So it, it looks like... Wait, what? There, so I guess if you're not using Wi-Fi for local multiplayer, you're using Bluetooth. And I guess they they have to allocate some of the Bluetooth channels that normally would have gone to controllers or multiplayer for okay. audio. All right, that's not that a big sense? deal. That's not a big deal. It's yeah. only local. It's only local wireless. Right. So 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 so, like th- so that's that that's that doesn't seem possible that m- local multiplayer is running through Bluetooth, but there's probably some sort of connection. I think what's happening is when the two switches start the initial connection the initial connection is happening through bluetooth and then right. it's going through wi-fi i think that's yeah. how that happens so there's would be some problems there and that's totally fine but if i can't yeah. use the internet on this thing while i'm using bluetooth audio i'm gonna have some problems <laughs> with 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 mr mario and reggie fils uh, the two guys yeah, who was- run everything in nintendo uh note there are three notes only one Bluetooth audio device can be paired at a time, but up to 10 devices can be saved on a Nintendo Switch. So you can, you can like, link up to 10 different audio devices, but only one can be used at a time. This is good because I, I have over-the-ear Bluetooth headphones and I have AirPods. So I can sync them both and just go back and forth between the two. I'm remembering uh, that I don't really have any Bluetooth headphones. I have these. I have a Steel Series, right? Uh, but I don't know if they're charged. Uh, also, note: uh, Bluetooth microphones cannot be used. What the fuck? <laughs> what is wrong with them? Come on! That can't, that can't be that hard to <sighs> add after you add bluetooth audio it's like it's all this that like that's got to be part and parcel how can you not expect of uh, bluetooth microphones unless they specifically mean bluetooth specific microphones but i don't think they make microphones that are bluetooth only do they um probably but uh nobody buys them i know so wait where is so, where is it where is what the up the oh. the, the the actual thing okay oh wait i don't have it connected i thought it'd be uh, also uh, you you may experience audio you may experience audio latency depending on your bluetooth device how do i connect to the bluetooth okay i got it i got you uh make oh, sure right there. there are no bluetooth audio okay <laughs> pair device okay well i have to charge my steel series headset before I okay. do anything. So, uh, do I have a cable? Man, I gotta update my switch. I don't think I turned it on since it beat Super Metroid. Uh, hmm. I guess I'm charging this on my computer. There you go. All right, we'll let that sit for a while. I don't even know if it's charging. Oh, there it goes. Okay, we'll let that sit for a while, and then we'll give it a whirl in a little bit. So that's exciting news for anybody who wanted. It is. To. It is exciting news. I want to see if it works docked. It doesn't say. I don't it, see why it wouldn't. It doesn't say it doesn't work docked, but yeah, I, I don't can't see believe why it wouldn't. Can't believe it's taken uh, f- four years <laughs> for 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 a software update. To allow for Bluetooth audio. And I made a video talking about how it's kind of ridiculous that there's no Bluetooth audio on the Switch. And uh, people tried to give me excuses for why there's no Bluetooth audio. Like technical (laughs) reasons why there wouldn't be, like why the Switch isn't capable of Bluetooth audio. And uh, here we are with a simple software update giving us Bluetooth audio. Here's a question. Did yes. this just render all those people who make Bluetooth dongles for the Switch obsolete? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Uh, well, they can try to go for the angle 
of you can play local wireless with this. Yeah, or like you can you can still have all of your controllers hooked up and whatnot. But or, or, or they'll probably say better quality and also. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if the mic works through that. I don't see why it would. Yeah. But that's oh, wait. the thing. Like you got. I when, think I, I think that, I talk running. about that in my video. I think I might talk yeah. about that in my video. Well, when you get this up and running, uh, you got to let us know if Bluetooth microphones, if that means the microphone connected to your headset or uh, just solo Bluetooth microphone. I'll boot, up, I'll boot up Overwatch and try it out. I think Overwatch is yeah. the one where when you boot it up, you could see the mic on the screen like immediately. Uh, okay. Or that might be Rogue Company. I don't remember. But one of them is the one that I tested in my video because you see the mic on the screen. Yeah. Um. But anyway... Uh, while this thing charges, we're going to talk about the GameCube turning 20 years Yay. old. Yay! Uh, also, I'm going to give a thank you to... Uh, we got Spoopy Girl for the six months, Ackmeister for the five months. Is this going to be the week that you're finally going to talk positive about the PlayStation? Yes, actually, yes. I yes. very <laughs> much enjoyed uh the playstation showcase and a game that came out this week um uh, or I, I want to enjoy anyway uh mako fox thank you for the five bits what's up wolf bros do y'all remember when bob's best twitch advice was to be a girl no how could uh, no, i would never say such a thing also i'm ranking every podcast intro to date with the 50th episode oh my good god wow uh game... i wish you would have did this with the last podcast where i actually had like good jokes yeah during the introduction <laughs> 200 something good jokes yeah game journey thank you for the eight months eight months and counting and i'm not bored of you yet just kidding you guys are great keep up the fun also bluetooth banging thank you game journey the red queen thank you for the 30 months the spoopy girl thanks for the 200 bits woot to bluetooth and wolf bros rock thank you very much hey that means you can watch this podcast on youtube on your switch Yes. Uh, with Bluetooth audio. Amazing. Incredible. There you go. All right. Everybody Game, wins. GameCube's 20 years old. Will, yes. why is yes. yours a little yellow? <laughs> uh, so, well, this is not our childhood GameCube. Uh, is that, I bought this. Is what? that black or purple? Purple. I bought this secondhand from um, Too Many Games for one year. That is disgusting. I <laughs> I know it was the only one I could find for a reasonable price. That we, also had the, the, the connector in the back for my GCHD. We need to get you a shell. Wait, what is this? Yeah. What? I'm what look. Up, I, I looked up GameCube shell. Oh, this is for a Game Boy Advance SP. That's pretty cool. Okay, a GameCube that is cool. shell. For... I have one of that. Uh, yeah. No, we. I want to. We got to get like a cool, like acrylic looking shell. Yeah, no, for that I know. thing or something. Oh, there's a wood. You can get a wood shell. That's cool. Honestly, I'd be okay with like vinyl, a vinyl sticker for it that goes all the way around, as long as it's a nice one. Get on a D brand. Yeah. Uh, so custom shell. Yeah, but our our GameCube is. I don't. Is that still at our parents? That was the black yes. one, and we yes. actually got that at launch, back when you could do that. Uh, I see a lot of controller shells. I don't see any GameCube yeah. shells. Uh, yeah, we got a launch GameCube. Uh, lot we have a lot of fond memories on the GameCube. My yeah. my fondest memory is not liking Luigi's Mansion because I wanted Mario when the game when the GameCube launched, and I was pissed off. I had to play as scaredy cat, little pussy bitch boy Luigi. Yeah, but that was a good game. <laughs> I didn't like it. I wanted to jump around, couldn't jump around. Sure, you couldn't jump in that game, which was weird, but... And then we got Mario Sunshine, and my mind was blown away. Yes. And then I played it almost 20 years later, and uh, I blew my mind in a different way, Will. I wanted to blow my fucking <laughs> brains out. Yeah. I mean, some games don't age as well as others, but I would say the GameCube... Like, this era was this was the beginning of games like finally finding their footing in terms of like how to make 3d games and most of the games especially on gamecube most of them have aged better uh than like the previous generation 
uh let's say so so like you can you can pick up a game like metroid prime or uh resident evil 4 or something like that you could play it today and still get like the full experience and like not be hindered too much by like the gameplay limitations of the time this is one of my favorite console generations because uh we already knew about uh like 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 3d wasn't it was relatively new but it wasn't like 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 you said developers found their footing in the three yeah. era uh they were able to uh to to make it work uh for the most part but they were still willing to uh to do some crazy stuff they it, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't like i would say around the xbox 360 and xbox one era um there were developers found way too much of a footing and games became very samey all the first person shooters yes. played exactly the same all of the, yes you know uh third person open world games were exactly the same uh, that's when ubisoft started to make the same game over and over and over again mm -hmm. um but in like the gamecube playstation 2 era uh everybody was still messing around with mechanics every game was different than than yeah. its neighbors there was it. a lot of experimentation there was a lot of like let's do this and then the sequel let's do something completely different that doesn't work with something completely different for the next one um, you did see a lot of, you know, once Grand Theft Auto 3 hit, everybody tried to make an open world game. Um, but they still found ways to make, like, put their spins on that right. formula. So, um, not so much Nintendo, because Nintendo don't give a shit about what anyone <laughs> else does. Um, um, so, another game that came out around this era was uh, <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2. And I think that was one of the first games we got because i really wanted uh i really wanted to play sonic adventure 2 we didn't have a dreamcast yeah and uh I, that was a i absolutely sonic adventure loved 2 it was like one of the best-selling games on on gamecube i think because nobody had a dreamcast at the time right i i loved sonic adventure 2 it's got a lot of problems but at the time mm -hmm. that it came out it was a phenomenal game it was yeah. immediately dwarfed by super mario sunshine though yeah um which is a far superior platformer but uh mm -hmm. still it, it, it made me love my gamecube even more um yeah more games that we liked will's favorite game of all time is on the gamecube Yes, Resident Evil 4. I stand by it. I remember being so excited for that game. Um, I went to get it on launch day. The guy at GameStop gave me a really hard time because I didn't pre-order it. Um, but I managed to convince him to give me the special edition version, which just came in a tin case mm -hmm. uh, for $10 more. But I didn't care. I, I wanted it, and I played it, and it was everything I could hope for and more. It was just... It's the perfect blend of, like... Because everyone says oh, Resident Evil 4 is when the series became an action series. This game's still terrifying. A game is still like a yeah. really scary game. And like five and six kind of like forgot about that. Um but like it also like embraced like the stupid side of Resident Evil, because like Resident Evil is pretty stupid, but mm -hmm. like the previous games always had like a self-seriousness about it. And Resident Evil 4 is like, nah, dude, we got a we got a guy who's just like Napoleon. Uh, who is also like a monster and whatnot. So, one of and the Leon says the dumbest shit in that game, and it's great. One of the reasons uh, Resident Evil's always been scary is because uh, the mechanics are not the best, and it makes when a zombie's coming at you real slow, it's really hard to either get away or shoot them. Um, yeah, and Resident Evil Four made it a lot easier but it's still not the way it is today in third person games no yeah. you still have to uh stop moving aim and shoot and when there's a when there's a million you know zombies coming at you it, it, it that's that's where i think the horror comes from not so yeah. much uh uh the i mean the atmosphere yes but uh yeah it's it is kind of an act it's like a silly action game <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh yeah that might be one of my favorite resident evil games i mean it might be my yeah. favorite yeah i think it is my favorite resident evil game uh although i didn't play too much of the second remake i did like that though that was that's probably the closest they've ever come to like those heights honestly because mm -hmm. like uh, that that they leaned back into the horror more into the horror element but they kept the resident evil 4 style controls i mean you can move while aiming um so it just made it 
feel modern while also retaining like all the the things that made the original scary. Right. Uh, we also have uh, people's best, I mean, people's favorite Super Smash Bros. game, Ma- uh, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Yes. Uh, which is uh, one of the uh, uh, longest running competitive fighting games. I guess the yes. only other one would be, uh, uh, the only other one that's as popular would be uh, Street Fighter 2. I, I was going to say Marvel vs. Capcom, but because they keep, they, they always like add the new version of Street Fighter to right. the tournaments. Like they use Street Fighter 5 now, but like Marvel Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and Smash Brothers Melee, they use those versions. They don't use Ultimate or MVC 3 nearly right. as much true that that's a good point uh yeah. but yeah smash bros melee uh f- probably the most played game on the gamecube because <laughs> because people yeah. are still <laughs> playing it um i'm not sure how much uh i mean i still love super smash bros ultimate um but if i had to pick one game on the gamecube to play uh today it might be melee because of how much everybody else plays it and how much you can get out of it i mean especially if you can get it in dolphin on your computer uh or or, i forgot what oh slippy i think i think that's a dolphin extension though so yeah people play smash Bros. online still to this day there's just a lot of weird things you got to do in order to get it to work uh, a lot of people in the chat are telling me about the Bluetooth audio update. We talked about it before. I'm charging yeah, my headphones. We're going to get to it again later. Uh, Stay we gotta, tuned. Uh, to see if we can get this working properly. Right. Um, anyway, other games. We got Mario Kart Double Dash. There's a lot of people's favorite Mario Kart game. Yeah, that was like definitely like a cult hit because it did not review very well, like at least compared to the other Mario Kart games. And it had a weird... Um, two-man cart mechanic where you pick two player two characters to be in the cart and you can switch back and forth between the two um one steers and one throws the the item um but it lent itself to some really interesting gameplay uh mechanics and really interesting multiplayer because one player can be the driver and the other player can be the the weaponeer so that really changed up the mario kart formula in a way that really hasn't been seen since yeah, I wonder if they would go back to something like this. Um, I I mean, I've never been that big on Mario Kart. I've only played it, like, you know, if it's at a friend's house or something or everybody yeah. just wants to play it. Whenever you have, like, people over who don't play games too much, this is the game that they that they pick. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't, re- I don't remember how much I liked Double Dash versus uh, the other versions of Mario Kart. Um, I remember liking it when I played it at my friend's house, but... We didn't own it. I didn't feel like the need to rush out and get it. Right. You know, the only one I remember like really liking was the one for the DS. And I think I only liked it because yeah. like it was portable and you can have a bunch of people in a room playing on their own DSs. And yeah. Now you can do that on a Switch. And I still <laughs> haven't done that, but I probably would like that the most. Um anyway. Uh what else do we have here? Oh, Mario Strikers. Oh yeah, that's a game. So we, I think that that I think that's people's favorite sports Mario game, and we yeah. we saw two Mario Strikers games, and then nothing after that. I, I think they were supposed to be a third, and it got canceled or something. We talked about it yeah, a the, bit the third the was before. supposed to be like some weird like soccer meets wrestling like hybrid type game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, where where up? Yeah, this is it. Okay. I'm making sure I'm getting the right Mario Strikers footage here. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a lot of like, this must be through an emulator or something. All this all this GameCube footage I'm pulling up is like beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But it's widescreen, so I'm a little upset about that. Well, some GameCube games did support widescreen. I don't think that. Well, actually, the font looks normal. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but- I played this like way after the game came out. I played this like yeah. uh, like probably like ten years after the freaking game came out, and uh, that was for the first time. And it, I was like, "Holy shit! How did I miss this game? This is incredible!" Yeah. Um. Uh, of course, Metroid Prime. All Metroid three of Prime. Them. Yeah. Well, no, the well, first two. Three, yeah, the third one was on Wii. Wii. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, Metroid Metroid Prime, the first one especially, was 
because we were not Metroid kids growing up. Like we never really played the, those games. Uh, we didn't even know about the series until the original Super Smash Brothers with Samus. Well, that's that, not true. Uh, I used my roommate now uh, when we were little. He had an NES. Oh, that's right. He yeah. had the original Metroid. So I used to play Metroid at his yeah. house. And I had no idea what I was doing because I would be at yeah. his house. So I'd only have the amount of time I'm at his house. So I would only have like an hour to see where I could go. And then I would get lost. Yeah. And that's it. Well, Metroid Prime was like our like proper in- first proper introduction to it where we could actually like right. sit down and play the game and like figure out what the whole deal of it was. And that game is just so unique and so clever in the way like it it immerses you in the the world and Samus's armor specifically. You feel like you're in you're this like badass bounty hunter in this like five ton suit of armor. Of uh, the way the way its levels were laid out, where you could like you could try to like sequence break it and like go to another part that you're not supposed to, but, like, it really does, like, try to make you go through it a certain way to find all the items necessary, but it doesn't hold your hand. You, like, you can, like, figure it out as you go along. And the I way, think like, that's weaves... why I stopped playing it. <laughs> I don't think I ever beat it. <laughs> I got close. I got up to Metroid Prime, and that dude is hard. The guy on so the cover? I... No. <laughs> the game man? Yes. The Metroid? Yes, I got up I got up to the Metroid Prime, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I remember like being really frustrated at that boss, but I, I got pretty far. The problem like cuz I think we were too young to understand that like that's a slower paced game and it's more about the exploration than it is about like shooting everything in sight. Right. Um but like you know, I cuz I like got when I finally like played it seriously and got up to Metroid Prime, I was in college. So, like, that, I had reached a point where, like, I'm going to actually, like, take this seriously and, like, try it for real. And I did, and I enjoyed the hell out of it. Same thing with Super Metroid. Had I played Super Metroid when, like, when it came out, I would have hated it. and would have gotten, like, two feet in and then, you know, not continued. But that's definitely a game where, like, time has been kind to it. Right. If you ever, like, get a chance, definitely play Metroid Prime. I haven't played the second one, um, but I, I have played the third one, and the third one is also very good. So, uh, Metroid Prime came out November 17th, 2002. Metroid Fusion came out November 18th, 2002. Yes. I remember Metroid Fusion being uh, the most Metroid I've ever played. (laughs) Because I actually beat that game. Uh, I don't remember which one I played first. Did we get Metroid Fusion later? I feel like we got it at around the same time. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I remember the hype the hype train for both of those games. It was like, Metroid's coming back. One for the GameCube and one for the GBA. Get them both. Right. So. Yeah, I I very much enjoyed Metroid Fusion. Uh, yeah. Metroid Prime, I liked it. But yeah, I got lost and kind of gave up after a while. I probably yeah. moved on to a different game. Uh, like, for yeah. example, Metal Gear Solid uh, Twin Snakes. Uh, yes. So we were very big stealth game fans. I liked Rainbow yes. Six. I, we liked Splinter Cell. I had, I had mm-hmm. all, I had, we had the first Splinter Cell on, on GameCube. Uh, GameCube. Okay, there you go. Yep. And then I got the other two on PC. Um, yes. And then uh, I we I always wanted to try Metal Gear, but it was on freaking PlayStation. I think I had the yeah. PC version, but I only played like the side missions. I don't play I didn't play like yeah. anything else. Uh, and then we had the Game Boy version, which was awesome. Yeah, uh, the Game Boy Color version. And now we finally got a chance to play Metal Gear Solid the original. And yeah, a lot of Metal Gear fans hate uh, the Twin Snakes because it's not uh, a pure like remaster it's it it changes not, a lot of things so it's it's metal gear solid one remade with the metal gear solid two engine so a lot of things you can do in uh sons of liberty that you couldn't do in the original you can like first person aiming or like hanging off of the legend stuff and in a lot of cases that like makes the game easier than than the original was also of uh, they redid a lot of the cutscenes and the voice. It's the original oh. voice cast, but like, oh, I'm watching one re- right now, Will. <laughs> yeah, but like they, they made it a lot more over the top, and like they they went all out with their voice voice acting. They weren't as like subdued as they were originally. Um, 
which is probably why I like Liquid Snake so much because he's so fucking cartoonish in this version compared to the original. So, so, so I it's a it's a ver- Metal Gear is a very weird series. Um, yes. Right now, I'm watching a cutscene that just has Mario and Yoshi just in the background. Uh, this is a very mm-hmm. serious cutscene, and it just has Mario and yeah. Yoshi just sitting in the background. But that's yeah. the thing with Metal Gear is that it's a very serious game with like weird, silly, like like jokes and quirks just thrown in the 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 seriousness um and it's only amplified in this version because uh uh yeah the graphics are better and and they they've redid everything to make it sillier and make it like an action movie um yeah but i loved all of that weird stuff like i was so down for that the game is still fun as hell it's still like it, it is like one of the best they took one of the best PlayStation games of all time and made it one of the best GameCube games of all time. Like, I just, I, it sucks that you can't find this. This version is only on the GameCube. Like, they've never ported it. They've never put it anywhere else. They've never even like stripped out the Nintendo references in it to put it on anywhere else. It's a shame because I, I feel like had more people played this, they would have seen like the genius. Of what they were able to do with this game. Uh, I might think this is the best version because this is the one that I played. But uh, going back yeah. and like trying the play, the original PlayStation version, I still think this probably controls better and is just easier on the eyes yeah. and everything. So even though it's like yeah, flamboyant no, and over the top, I still think that like this is the way to go. Yeah. Um, and it helped get us into the Metal Gear series. And I played every single yeah, fucking one after this. Yep. Uh, so... Uh, I'm grateful for that. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know what else we had a great time with on GameCube. A lot of the Resident Evils, like Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil One remake. Well, and Resi- stuff. there was the Resident Evil One remake and Resident Evil Zero. Yeah, because when Resident Evil Four was announced, um, Shinji Mikami said, "We'll put all the Resident Evils on GameCube, and hell, we'll remake the first one and make it the best version of the old style Resident Evil games." And it was. <laughs> Yeah, we got into Resident Evil on Resident Evil 2. Uh, mm-hmm. And I skipped 3. I think you did too. Uh, I did too, yeah. And then on GameCube, we got 4. And uh, we were excited yeah. about that because Leon. We knew Leon mm-hmm. from Resident Evil 2. Uh, and then yeah. we went back and played 1 because they remade it, which was yeah. great. And then we yeah. played 0, which was okay. <laughs> this was okay, yeah. Um, um, trying to think of what else. Uh, uh, you I, had a... Re- you like to turn? Are you gonna say Eternal Darkness? You really like Eternal? I was Darkness. gonna say Eternal Darkness. Yeah, yeah. I really like Eternal Darkness. It was it was made by the people who made uh, Twin Snakes, Silicon Knights. It was this really cool, really interesting uh, H.P. Lovecraft inspired horror game uh, that played with your sanity. So in addition to monitoring your health, you also had to monitor um, your sanity meter. And if it got too low, it would do crazy things to like first to your character like it would uh make you see things that weren't really there uh it would make you lose health faster or make uh your body parts fall apart um and that's all fun and then <laughs> would start to do things to you the player like uh the game would freeze or it would pretend the uh video input had changed or it would say it was erasing your save file or you know fun little things like that <laughs> So it looks like you play as a bunch of different characters, but I know you're like a, you're like that woman, and then I guess you you like get transported into different players' bodies. Right? Yeah. So, so the main the main story is you're trying to find out like who killed your grandfather, um, and you find out that your grandfather is doing research on uh, I forgot the name of the I think it was called the Tome of Darkness, and you read stories about different people who have encountered the book throughout history. And you learn about like this battle between these weird demonic beings in space that are secret, secretly controlling everything. Um, it's really weird and out there stuff, but the moment to moment gameplay of trying to like find the right magic spells and weapons and stuff to get through everything and to unravel the mystery was like really cool and really interesting. It's really, it's honestly like a one of a kind game. Mm-hmm. And we haven't seen anything like it ever since. Nope. Um, so games we haven't played, uh, the Zelda stuff, <laughs> uh, which is very I've important. Played, 
I played a fair, my fair share of Wind Waker, and I remember enjoying it until I got to like the stealth part, which is everybody's least favorite part in the game, and mm -hmm. I just turned it off because it was not fun anymore. <laughs> uh, Wind Waker got HD on the uh, Wii U. We never got that on the Switch, right? Yes. Yeah, that's no. that that's made people very upset. Uh, also, Twilight yeah. Princess. Uh, yes, we got we, played that on the Wii, mm -hmm. which probably not the best version because that game is definitely a game that required a controller. And it flipped everything on the on the. They, they just straight up yeah. flipped the entire world. Uh, because, yeah, because they wanted because Link is left handed and they wanted you to have uh, the 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 sword in your right hand for the motion controls. Yeah, which is a very weird, probably last minute change that they decided to make. Yeah. Um, but people love those games. Yeah. Um, there was uh, other stuff that we didn't play. Uh, uh, F Zero GX. <laughs> yes. Oh, Star Fox. Uh, Star Fox had two oh, Fox. very contentious games. Uh, on the GameCube. Uh, we got yes. Assault and Adventure. Adventure, yeah. So Star Fox Adventure started off as a game called Dinosaur Planet until Shigeru Miyamoto saw it and said, hey, make this a Star Fox game. And that was it. So they had to like redo the assets to make it like Star Foxy. They had to shove an R-Wing section in there. Mm -hmm. From what I understand, the game isn't technically that bad. It's just, it's this weird Zelda clone with... Uh, you know the Star Fox characters, and it's not what people wanted out of a Star Fox game, right? Um, and then there was Star Fox Assault, which was a Star Fox game, and people, you know, it was good until the parts where you had to get out of the R wing um, and walk around on foot; those were bad, and nobody wants to play a Star Fox game where you're not piloting the R wing. <laughs> now, I think Star Fox fans go back and forth about which one they, they like the most and which one they like the least. Yeah. Uh, it would make sense to me that Assault is the good one because that's the one that is like a yeah. Star Fox game. Uh, but I'm not sure. Now, now we, in one of the Giga leaks we got recently, uh, they straight up leaked the Dinosaur Planet ROM. You can just play yeah. fucking the original Dinosaur, Dinosaur Planet, Planet yeah. uh, if you Google hard enough. Which is pretty cool. Uh, yeah. I have the ROM. I haven't actually tried it, but maybe one of these days yeah. I will. I keep clicking around in in Star Fox Assault, and there is a lot of on foot sections. Yeah, I think that was like the every review is like you. You're mostly on foot in this game. <laughs> That's annoying. Yeah. Um, and st I think ever since then, Star Fox has uh, really had a Star hard Fox time trying to figure problems, out what it's yeah. doing. Yeah. <laughs> You would think it's you would think it wouldn't be that hard, but right. These days, uh, it's kind of. Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to play some of these games. Um, yeah, GameCube emulation has gotten really, really good. Uh, yeah, lately you can. There's a lot of devices that have GameCube capabilities. Uh, the Dolphin emulator on Windows and and uh, uh, Mac and even uh, on Android. Uh, yeah, runs pretty decent if you got a decently powerful device. Uh, so yeah, if you got enough space, you can uh, you can play a lot of these games through emulation. Uh, otherwise, you got to get yourself a damn GameCube to play a lot of this stuff, yeah. and they can get they're pretty uh, pretty sought after. It's 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 uh, yeah. you're gonna probably spend a little a little bit of money. Also, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to connect it to an HDMI TV or whatever, uh, you got to get one of them uh, GCHDs or something to make it look yeah. nice and pretty. There but are, there are other solutions pretty. for it, but uh, we would recommend the GCHD because that's like the easiest to use, and uh, they're friends of ours. There's a newer, cheaper one, isn't there? Not uh, not by Eon, but uh, somebody else. Didn't somebody else make one? Yeah, there's like I, there's a couple of them. I don't remember all their names, but. Uh, yeah, if you if you look, I think Castlevania Games has like all of them. That it's a little dangerous getting the uh, the upscalers. I mean the the, the HDMI yeah. converter things because uh, the way they connect to the GameCube, they could straight up brick your GameCube. So yeah. so uh, be very careful which one you get. We like the Eon because uh, 
at least the newer it's reinforced Eon, yeah yeah it's it's it, it's not gonna move and that's when uh they break your gamecube if if they disconnect yeah. at the wrong time or 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 if you wiggle it the wrong way um so yeah those are your ways to get nice pretty gamecube on your new device but of course the prettiest i mean the prettiest way is probably emulation but uh yeah uh, it's not if you want if the you're most an original authentic. hardware guy yeah yeah we like original hardware and of course the controller uh the controller is uh it's, 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 it's people's favorite retro controller uh people still, still use it right still now for games today yeah. yeah they still use it for smash Bros. nintendo still se- this is the only retro controller nintendo still sells brand new yeah unless I you mean, count the, the switch the, the switch online controllers yeah it's a good controller it, it feels good in your hands uh it's a little small sure but like it it's still uh the way it's curved makes everything feel really good and really ergonomic um the button placement like the big a button the little b button and then the x and y around it it really like helps not just game designers but game players like guide you to the important buttons rather than just having everything like the same shape and size and whatnot Mm -hmm. it made multi-platform games pain in the ass sometimes but (laughs) for gamecube specific games like they're that's the reason why they keep re-releasing the gamecube controller for smash brothers because it was the best controller for smash brothers resident evil 4 was designed for the gamecube controller so the gamecube controller is the best way to play resident evil 4 yeah nintendo did the nintendo thing where they made something uh wacky and uh yeah it was kind of more in line with some modern controllers because it had almost the same amount of buttons and uh, yeah. the same amount of face buttons. They were just put in a weird uh, hierarchy. Like the A button is massive. Then you have the X and Y yeah. button like kind of off to the side of the A button so you can easily move your finger to that. And then you have the B button in another weird spot. Um, so uh, it is a little hard to get a modernized version of that. I w- used to always be on the team that like you got to give up the GameCube controller eventually. Like for Smash Brothers, uh, how could a GameCube controller be the best input device? You got to just give it up and just get a modern controller. But after playing a lot yeah. of Smash Brothers, got to say GameCube controller is the best input device for that. It just feels yeah. so much better, especially with the with the way friggin' uh, Smash Brothers plays. Well, X and Y are the jump buttons. That's why they're off to the side because yeah. they both do the same thing. Uh, yeah. B is for specials. A is the most important button uh so that's why it's so big so now uh our friends over at retro bit uh made a new version of the gamecube controller for uh, apparently works on gamecube also i didn't know that but it's a uh, gamecube <laughs> switch and pc uh oh yeah, yeah and uh they usually give us stuff we might have one from them we have so- a package from them from the po box but it might be uh the playstation 2 uh, controller that's you retro can fighter yeah, it's that's the same company. Is it? Because we've gotten confused by this before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing Kevin Kenson's video of it right now. Okay. Oh no, you're right. It's a different company. Yeah. Oh, Retrobit okay. made an adapter. That's what it was. Somebody in the chat Retro, was saying. Okay. Retro Fighter. They made the N64 Brawler 64 controller. They did the Dreamcast one. They kickstarted a PS2 one, uh, which I forgot to email them about. And I think... Oh, you never emailed them about the PlayStation 2? No, I completely like, oh, slept so the, on that. What you have in the in the in for the unboxing later is definitely going to be uh, this one, the GameCube one. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm showing yeah. Kevin Kenson has a video on it right now, uh, which is why yeah. I told Will to check the P.O. box because I knew he was making this video. <laughs> um, and I basically... I base. <laughs> Sorry, I basically only play my N64 games with the uh, Retro Fighter controller because they make such a better yeah. version of the N64 controller. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we like the Retro Fighter versions of old stuff. I don't know how much better their GameCube controller can be because I already like the original GameCube controller, but maybe this might yeah. be what. I, well, actually, now that I look at it, the A, the B the A button is in a weird spot. But uh, there is a apparently because I'm a Castlevania games right now. Apparently, Retro Fighters also has another GameCube controller called the uh, Blade GC. It's a wireless one. And that has... It's got the the GameCube button layout, but it has um, 
the oh. analog sticks in a different spot. This is the one that I saw them mention today. I think this is brand new. Oh. This item will be released April 25th, 2022. I think they oh. literally just announced this. Yeah. Compatible with GameCube, Game Boy Player, Switch, and PC. Hold on, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna look up Retro Fighter. So that's the one that I was talking about that works on GameCube. Yeah. This yeah, this is eight hours ago. To commemorate the twentieth anniversary of the GameCube, we are announcing the launch of Retro Fighter's GameCube wireless gamepad. I need to nice. know how this is going to work on freaking uh, GameCube. So the other one, the one that Kevin's using in this video, the one that we're probably going to unbox later, uh, I don't think it works on GameCube. I think this is only for the Switch. So this is ba this is a Pro uh, controller. Um, yeah. But this one works on friggin' GameCube. Yeah. Uh, I th I'm guess it says 2.4 wireless gigahertz technology. So it probably means a dongle and... Uh, you just plug it into the GameCube that way. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. I will say, speaking of all of this, uh, do I have it here? Hold on. I'm coming. All right. Yes. So the GameCube was the first uh, Spager video game system to have a proper wireless controller. There have been wireless controllers before, but they're all crap. Um, Nintendo made the WaveBird controller, which was the first one to use the wireless uh, 2.4 gigahertz technology. It didn't come standard. It didn't come bundled with GameCubes, but this was, at the time, the best wireless controller. And because it was made by Nintendo, it was, you know, first party, it was quality. And then, cut to next generation, what's everybody using? Wireless controllers. Mm -hmm. So... That so a, a lot of companies like PlayStation had wireless controllers also, uh, but they weren't that great. I remember. And there was a lot of third a lot party of wireless, wireless controllers, controllers. At the time they were using IR, like what Oof. your TV remote uses. And, yeah. and that's awful for video games. This was the first one to utilize like what uh, cordless telephones use that kind of wireless technology. So, so, so which is much better. I looked at a receiver a few days ago of a WaveBird. It has 16 channels. There's only yes. four <laughs> inputs on a GameCube. That means yeah. you can have... That means four GameCubes in a room can have four WaveBirds each. So, that's math. yes. That uh, is math. I know... <laughs> Well, I know like they had they had so many uh, channels just in case like you had interference on one, you could try another. Right. But so the GameCube had online functionality, but like only like two games really used it. Whereas like Sony and Microsoft were really pushing online gameplay. Nintendo really wasn't. But there were some Wii uh, GameCube games that supported LAN of multiplayer like i think double dash is one of them so yeah you could hook up four game cubes in a room and 16 wave birds <laughs> so uh i i know that like you know usually like when you have a bunch of friends over and you have to pick a controller everybody wants the proprietary you know controller that came with the system the yeah. wave bird is the only one that i can think of where people are like that one i want that one yeah. <laughs> and it's still a first party controller, but that's like the premium yeah. first party controller. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh so that's a lot of the legacy that the GameCube has left in its twenty yeah. years that it's been on this yeah. earth. Um it was a system that was not well regarded at the time, I think because Nintendo like Nintendo was do off doing Nintendo things and like focusing on more like all ages stuff, whereas Sony and Microsoft were really pushing the more mature audience, going after like the more mature crowd. And people like looked at the GameCube at the time as as like a kid's console, and it didn't sell very well. Um, a lot of publishers didn't put games on it because it didn't sell very well. Um, but now. I think the GameCube has looked back probably at 
the most i don't want to say the most fondly because ps the ps2 also came out at the time but it is certainly looked back like people remember that system more fondly than they did back then people who didn't have a gamecube back then are now like looking to get the system to see the games that they missed yeah uh i think the gamecube had a lot of uh uh like um uh high regarded games a lot of a lot of the games on the yeah. gamecube uh stand the test of time compared to a lot of other re- retro systems uh also the playstation yeah. 2 sold so many more than the gamecube <laughs> the gamecube was considered a failure when it came out it only sold yeah so in the list of best selling consoles of all time the gamecube is just above the wii u now it sold a lot more than the wii u but it is yeah next to the wii u in the in the in the list the wii u was a piece of garbage the gamecube (laughs) was not so yes it's just it was just in an unfortunate uh uh, i also would like to point out while you have this list up here that yeah it says the gamecube sold uh 21.74 million copies Mm -hmm. million units the xbox sold 24 million copies so only like two million more and nobody talks about how the original Xbox was a failure. Well, that was all Americans. And that's bizarre to me because the GameCube, yeah. like uh, the GameCube was more worldwide. And, and that's how yeah. much that is like, we expect Xbox to not sell too much because it's mostly Americans that are buying that shit yeah. or, or you know, like, I don't know, but uh, GameCube should be selling a lot more th- than that. That this is how much right. GameCube the GameCube failed in the grand scheme of things. Uh and you got GameCube at number whatever the hell and then all the way up at the top you got PlayStation 2 which came out at the yeah. same time. So that's how badly the GameCube did. But if I had to pick one, I might pick the GameCube, well. I mean, it's hard. I when we did our tier list, I put PS2 in S tier and I think I put GameCube in A. Mhm. Um, I think the PS2 definitely has more, definitely has more games on it and has a right. lot of really good games, Right. but the GameCube has less games, but you're more likely to find a, you're more likely to find a good game on it. You don't have to wade through as much crap to find something good on the GameCube. It's Whereas got the Nintendo the quality. Yeah. Well, even like the third party games that came out for it. You know, yeah, there was a lot of dreck, but dreck. You, you definitely find <laughs> you would definitely find like a good game in there, like stuff like um, the James Bond games that EA was putting out. Like those were on other systems, but the GameCube versions were just as good as those. Um, the Tony Hawk games were coming out on the GameCube, and those are just as good as the other versions. Um, this was back when THQ was making the wrestling games and every system had a different uh, version, but a lot of people prefer the GameCube uh, wrestling games that THQ was putting out at the time. So yeah, it's just, it's a smaller library, but it's a, it's a quality over quantity with the GameCube. You're more likely to find a good game on your first go than on the other systems. I forgot that the PlayStation two can play PlayStation one games. I don't know if I would pick the GameCube over the PlayStation two. <laughs> I forgot you can get a whole entire other system library on there. True. Um, well, 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 the GameCube can play uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. That is also true. Yeah. Uh, I, I also, I just think I like the GameCube games more than I like the games that are on the PlayStation 2. Was Burnout yeah. on GameCube? So, the first two were. Because the first two were made by Acclaim. Then when ea bought the burnout rights they for some reason only put it on ps2 and original xbox that might have been my most played playstation 2 game i think that's yeah. because you bought a playstation 2 a little later and uh that, yes. was, that was like the game we were excited to play yeah those and uh metal gear obviously yeah metal gear 2 because well, well we got into it with twin snakes yeah uh, and then we got it for two and then later that year i think three came out right 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 well, anyway, that's the legacy of the GameCube left uh, on the gaming world, but mostly that's the legacy left in us. Uh, yes. There's kind of uh, 
I mean, we were Nintendo fans before that because of the N64. True. And the Game yes. Boy and the Game Boy Color and the DS and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, <laughs> we were we were uh, NES kids turned to Sega kids, diehard Sega kids. Yeah. And then almost yes. immediately uh, we were, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what would you call it? Nintendo kids again. We were Nintendo kids again because uh, our 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 daddy Sega left, uh, went out for a pack of smokes, and never came back. Yep. Um. But anyway, that's the GameCube. Uh, yes. Guys, we got more uh, notifications from you people. Yes. Uh, Mega Drag with ten bits. I want to ask this before I forget. Do you prefer your fans to listen to the podcast or watch it on video or live? I don't care how you consume our podcast. Uh, as long as you consume our podcast, whatever is easier for you guys, yes. consume the podcast. And make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Yes. Uh, and if you're here on Twitch, if you got Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription to help support us. You big dummies. You can get a free way to support us and give us money. Uh, AU Retriever with eight months. Bluetooth audio on the Switch. Wild. Yes. Uh, we yes. will get back to that in a minute. Lewin Mag with the six months. Hey, Wolf Bros, just coming to renew my subscription. What a guy. I'll listen to the podcast on Spotify <laughs> tomorrow. That's a bro, dude. That's, now that's a bro. Yeah. Coming in just to support and then <laughs> coming back later to consume. I'm down with that. Uh, you can also support while we're offline. You don't have to like come just for the podcast, but we <laughs> won't read it if you do it offline. Um Mega Drag with five bits. Y'all didn't even mention Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. No, that's because uh, well, I did play that. I think. We, I know we played the original Paper Mario. Then I never I played didn't this. understand it. This was the one that most people liked. This was most people's. This is the one everybody Paper says. Mario. Yeah. I don't think I ever played it. I think I played the original, and then I played the one on the Wii. Yeah. And I actually really liked the one on the Wii. The 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 the. Yeah, the one on the Wii was good. Yeah. The one Super that switches from yeah, it switches from two D to three D. Yeah. Uh, Austin Swinky, thank you for the prime and C Torta, thank you for the eleven months. Happy belated birthday, Bob. Did you either? Did either of you see the article The Verge posted about Bluetooth audio on the Switch? Yes. <laughs> People in the chat were like, Bob, could you please put on screen that you know about the Bluetooth audio? Um, no. Maybe we should. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk about it right now. So earlier in the podcast, we talked about All how. Right. Nintendo just came out and said that there's Bluetooth audio on the Switch now. Uh, so I guess now that my headset should be a little charged, we should try this out. All Why right. not? So uh, I don't know how interesting this is going to be for podcast listeners, but uh, let's turn this bitch on. I'm not even sure how to turn these freaking headphones on. So I have my switch here and my headphones here. I don't know if they're turning on. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. The green Bluetooth logo is blinking. So I hit pair device. It is searching. Mm -hmm. Let's see how this goes. Make sure the Bluetooth device is ready to pair. It should be ready to pair. Uh, thank you, I was Spoopy just like girl. To say while, oh no, you go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say while you're doing this, um, I was on Castlemania Games before looking up uh, the Retro Fighter stuff, and apparently they are selling uh, transparent cases for not GameCube but like the Super Nintendo. Hundred and thirty dollars. Oh. Ew. For a shell. <laughs> That's ridiculous. All right, my switch said unable to find Bluetooth audio devices. Uh, make sure your Bluetooth device is ready to pair. It's blinking. It should be ready to pair. Unless there's another thing I have to do to this stupid thing. Uh, what is that? The Steel Series Arctis Three. So this headset was made for the Nintendo Switch, uh, but it was made so that you can plug the headphones into the Switch and have it Bluetooth yeah. connected to your phone at the same time. Oh wait, here we go. I had to hold it for longer. Now it's blinking really fast. Okay. 
Uh, so we're trying it again. So anyway, this, these headsets were made with the Nintendo Switch Online app for the phone in mind, uh, which is horrible right. and a terrible way to y- use any headphones. So uh, this will hopefully work a little better. Again, this is the only Bluetooth headset that I own. Arctis 3 has been found. I'm connecting my Bluetooth audio. Connected. Up to two wireless controllers can connect while using Bluetooth audio. So I guess that's two Joy-Cons. So it yeah, is, I was going to say, does that mean two Joy-Cons? So it is using the uh, controller radio. That was a concern yeah. that I had when I was talking about this in my video. Bluetooth audio will be disconnected during local communication. Okay, so we're not doing that. Uh, so I got the headphones on. Mm-hmm. What is the game that I wanted to try with? Uh, let's let's try Rogue Company because it's right here. I think Rogue Company. It Rogue? It's either Rogue Company or, or Overwatch. Overwatch that has the little uh, audio blip thing. Right. I don't remember uh, which Ghost one has it. Imp says Overwatch. Uh, well, are you saying that because I said it before, or are you saying that because you know it has a little mic thing that comes up? Because I know it's one of these. Um, Boopy anyway. Girl said she just tried it with uh, her earbuds, and it worked great. Also, she said she sent 100 bits. Happy belated birthday, Bob. Oh, thank you very much for the 200 bits and the happy birthday. Also, thank you for the two gifted subs. Uh, this is an interesting thing. My Switch uh, just... Uh, just froze (laughs) (laughs) on a rogue company just crashed oh wow okay we will try overwatch then that's a sign from god that it's actually overwatch that we need to try yeah um where the hell's overwatch on here oh i got panty party do you think panty party has voice chat yeah yes i have a lot of games guys (laughs) My friends were like mad at me that I never read Lock and Key. So I just, I literally sent them a picture of my entire comic book backlog and it shut them up forever. <laughs> what is Lock and Key? Um, I, it's, a, it, it's a comic series written by uh, Stephen King's son, Joe Hill. It's like the uh, this weird like house with mysteries and stuff. Shows you how much I know about it. <laughs> I just realized you can sort by title. I never knew that. Oh, don't down. Da- okay, how long is this going to take to download? Also, it Shall took we... it took a second, but the he- the headphones weren't working for a second, and then it like randomly All just right. switched over to the headphones. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, start software. Let's see if I can just get into the game. I think you can. So again, we're, we're getting Overwatch open to see if the mic works. Oh, the, the headphones are working yeah. so far. Uh, there's no audio The headphones so are working. The, uh, the, I mean, like, I can hear it. Uh, right. Software update required. I will do that later, please. Login error. That's totally fine. Oh, you can't even open the game. Ah, oh, whack. Uh... Uh, download options download the software first three minutes okay that's not so bad okay uh, right. but but again i Shall can hear we... it so it's working fine yeah. it's, i guess should we try it in the dock maybe while this happens uh well i was gonna say do you want to just move on to the next article let's try meantime. this in the dock real quick just because okay. it's easy for me to do i could just do this whoops uh Where's my freaking? Uh, I need a con It's my freaking. No, my pro control is good. Oh, so another fun thing. Uh, normally, I have my game audio coming through HDMI so that the stream can hear it, and uh, today that won't happen because uh, <laughs> it's coming through Bluetooth. Also, fun, fun little thing. Uh, my Pro Controller is not connecting to the Switch right now. Oh. Also, you got the Joy-Cons connected. <laughs> well, no, because I have... Oh, that's a good point. But that should be 
directly connected. Also, I think my headset dis. No, no, it's still going. It's it's blinking orange now. Okay. Uh, I think you can see the orange light there. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the so I docked it and the headset's still connected. So that's a good sign. Um, but the controller's not. That is a bad sign. You know what? I'm going to attempt to sync it without using the cable. Because that's something that is kind of important. Oh. Oh, the software update finished. Okay. Now it's updating. It's going to... So it downloaded, but now it's going to update. Uh, hmm. All right. Four you know minutes. what? Let's try the Joy-Con. Okay. Okay, the Joy-Con work. Can I connect my Pro Control? This feature is not available while using Bluetooth audio, so you cannot go to your change grip order. Really? Yeah, you cannot go wow. there uh, while you're using Bluetooth headphones. So, where is my Pro Controller cable? Here's a different USB-C cable. I'll try this anyway. I'm gonna try That's to connect. News. I'm gonna try to connect the Pro Controller using uh, a cable here. Okay. Yeah. So it, if I plug it in, it goes to the second player, but I can't make it the first player. What happens? I think you can still. I think you can still use it to play as first player though some games if you go into the game and start using it it'll just work as the first player some games it won't i think yeah i think in mario maker whatever the first player is is the control you need to use mm -hmm. um so certain games will work differently the reason the start screen even exists is so that the game knows what controller you're using <laughs> that's how it it's yeah. been since the freaking yeah. nes um so crad white wings in the chat says i'm using my airpods on the switch while using my sn30 pro plus bob are you hardwired because this ain't working no. i'm confused by this so if i unplug now no yeah it's a completely disconnect up to two wireless controllers can connect while using Bluetooth audio. It just you just yelled at me. Okay, let me try my SN30. Oh wait, uh, am I not in? Uh, I'm not in switch mode. Boop. Uh, let's see here. Which is better, the SN30 Pro or the SN30 Pro 2? The Pro Plus is better because it's got more stuff. Yeah. Is it because your Joy-Con are still connected? I don't know how to unconnect them. You just hit the, maybe you hit the button. Dock the Joy-Con? Okay. They were docked before and it wasn't working. Yeah. Okay, now the Pro Controller's first player. But if I unplug it, there it goes. Oh, oh, it was a low battery. <laughs> yeah. So with the Joy-Con docked, I can use the Pro Controller with wireless. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just the battery's low. All right, now Overwatch is finished, so we can use it. Okay. Oh, so that's what the problem was, was that the Joy-Con were two separate controllers. That makes a lot of sense. That's why I was yelling at yes. you. Uh, okay, I don't all need right. to... Moment of truth, all this time. Yes. Uh, they don't have multiple Bluetooth channels, baby steps, Nintendo. I mean, it's just whatever was required, whatever they could do. Yeah. Um, what uh, I, I fucking did I just freaking dox my my 
I might just dox my my freaking uh, uh, stupid Overwatch like account information. Oh boy! Thanks, thanks, fucking Activision. I have to, I have to freaking unplug it. All right. So good news uh, is plugging it in and out of the dock is. Uh, it's, I'm still I'm taking it in and out of the dock and it's still working on my uh, Bluetooth. Oh shit! I just accidentally put it to sleep. I put it to sleep and that turned off my Bluetooth. Interesting. Uh. What the hell? Great now Overwatch crashed. Every I'm, I'm having a lot of problems. Let's, let's uh, move on to the next. All right, we'll move news. on to the next topic, and I'll continue to do this. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna leave these headphones on, and hopefully, you guys will get the hint that uh, I'm trying the Bluetooth <laughs> audio, so you could stop telling me about it. Uh. And you can also stop telling Bob about the Nintendo Switch base model price officially reduced to 259 pounds or 269 euros across Europe. Oh. I think you were telling him about that, but that is a news article we are talking about right now. As has been previously rumored, Nintendo has officially reduced the recommended retail price of the base model Switch in Europe. You will now start to find consoles available for 259 pounds instead of the previous 279 pounds asking price in the UK and 269 nice instead of the 329 <laughs> euros in other territories. The console is ready to pick up at this as newer lower price from the official My Nintendo UK store. If you want to jump in early, here are the links and then they provide you with the links to it. UK retailer Shop2 has slashed the price of its Switch consoles even further, currently offering both color options for £254. You can find both uh, deals below, but note the gray version is on back order. Time of writing. Um, if you're looking for other options at a wide variety of retailers, make sure to keep an eye on blah, blah, blah. So they've officially lowered the price of the original switch model in europe did we now i expect this in america also i feel like I this think, is something we predicted was going to happen well when they announced this the oled switch it was just assumed that that would become the switch and right. that would sell for 299 and that the base model would either get a lower price point or be discontinued Instead, they are releasing the OLED switch at $350 and keeping the base model switch for its launch price still. So, unless they are, like, I don't know if this is necessarily a sign that Nintendo of America is going to do the same thing with their, with their base switch, but I think it's a good indicator on what could happen in the near future. But why would they do it only in Europe? I don't know. Like, Nintendo is weird. I, I We know Nintendo is weird, but, like, their relation... Nintendo Japan's relationship with, like, Nintendo of America and Nintendo of Europe is, like, different from what I can gather. Oh. Like, I think Nintendo of America is more closely connected to Nintendo Japan, so they follow them to the letter, whereas Nintendo of Europe is, like, a little more... Like whatever, it looks like it was uh, a retailer shop to, and and uh, I don't think it's like a global thing. Well, it's the My Nintendo store, the official My Nintendo store in in the UK lowered their price as well. That's an official Nintendo thing, lowering the price of it. Oh. Oh, Shop 2 lowered it even more. Yes. Oh, well, but only a little bit. Only a little bit more. But right. Yeah, okay, that's that's weird. That does that's that's weird. Yeah. I I would expect something like this to happen in America when when the new Switch comes out or at least even like 
maybe even after the holidays. But I expect I expect the, the I expect the focus to be on the OLED switch when when right uh, that comes out. But why not announce that you're going to lower the price already, or uh, like uh, lower the price, lower the price when you announce the OLED switch? Because they want everybody to keep buying the original switch. The, the the weird thing to me is that they announced that they're doing this in Europe and Europe only. That's bizarre. That's very bizarre. Right. Um people are saying it's it's more expensive already in in the UK. Like the, the switch prices are already more than they are in America. Yeah. Uh, uh but Makes still, sense. I mean in Canada they're a lot more than they are in America. In Brazil, it's insane getting switches. I I think we're very fortunate here in America that uh game prices are are pretty low um yeah so i expect a little bit of a drop uh relatively soon of the original switch i, I think that the focus is going to be on the OLED switch because again i think that nintendo realized uh we could sell this thing for more other companies are selling their systems for more uh we're selling a butt ton of switches and uh we think we uh we we we're, we've been selling this uh for way less than we could have gotten away with and also, uh, yeah. uh, parts might have ended up costing more money now because of all those shortages. Uh, yeah. So I think that Nintendo uh, is going to try to sell the OLED Switch for more money and make it like the the, the flagship Switch is going to be the OLED one. And then the old one, right. they're going to try to phase out. And in, in phasing that out, they're going to sell it for a little less money at, at a deal to try to get rid of them. That's what I think, personally. Um, anyway, I got Overwatch up and it looks like it's not, it looks like the headset's not working at all. Um, I mean, the audio is working uh, for sure. Also right. good, good news. Uh, it is very easy to reconnect it. It, it, you just go into the settings and the, and the Arctis three is there. You just click on it and it reconnects very easily. Uh, but putting it into the dock, uh, you don't really have to do much. Uh, so yeah, it's still coming through the headset. Uh, I'm talking into the mic and nothing's happening. Uh, I guess I can try to plug headphones in and see if the thing comes up. Let me get my wired headphones here. Okay. So we can see what happens. I don't know what other headphones I have. Oh, wait, I do have headphones up there I could use. You know what? I'm going to grab those headphones. Those are right here. Okay. Uh, I have opened up the next article, so when we are ready to talk about that, we can dive right in. Okay. Right now I have Logitech headphones that I got with my Oculus. Mm -hmm. These should work just fine on the Switch because they have little three ring headphone adapter so i plug these bad boys in and then the audio switches over to them and then my mic hello so i'm hearing them coming out of the headphones okay options hello do i have to be in a freaking i have open mic set up hello Hello, can you see me or hear me? Am I in the corner? I should be in a corner. Hello. Hello. Playing? Hello? Find a group? Hello? Hello? You're gonna try a match. I don't know what to do to get the uh, the little headphone option to to show up at all. Uh, all right. No, but I think Bobby we've shown that. Shown. I that think what? we've shown that uh, the audio, the microphone doesn't work. No, but now I'm on the now I'm on the Logitech one, and I'm directly plugged in. That's why 
this should work and it's not that i you don't hear so so, so we're not definitive we haven't definitively proven that the that the mic doesn't work All on right. the other one uh uh hmm. you know what let's move on to the next story i'm gonna jump into a game of fortnite okay. which i know will show up on the uh on the screen okay well, while you do that, I'm going to talk about how a good PlayStation is now. PlayStation's the best system ever. Um, oh, yes. So Sony Sony had their um, PlayStation Showcase, which is like the Nintendo Direct, but for adults. Um, they've had some in the past. They've been a little lackluster. This time, they showed all their big guns and some of their small guns. <laughs> um, but it generally looked like they had a lot more to offer. Uh, starting off with Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake. Um, this is a remake of the 2003 game originally released on the original Xbox and PC. Um, this remake, we know nothing about it other than it is being developed by Aspire, um, who is a porthouse in the nicest way possible. I can say that. They, they um, they've they've ported uh Jedi Academy uh Jedi yeah. Jedi Knight 2 and uh mm -hmm. and uh, uh, uh Republic, Republic Commando, Commando. and they've they also, did a phenomenal job did, with those. Uh, they also did uh episode 1 Racer and they ported the original Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 to Steam and PS4 and Switch. Not Switch. They didn't put it on Switch yet. Um so this is leading me to believe that this might be a very faithful remake. Um, this isn't going to be like a, like a Resident Evil 2 style remake, um, which kind of sucks because <laughs> combat in, in KOTOR is not good, people. So, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm interested of... in the word remake. Yeah, because because uh, I don't think Aspire's made a remake. That they've only it's done knowledge, the no. remasters. Yeah. I mean, they've done good work with the remasters. For sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'll note that this, is, as of right now, this is a PS5 console exclusive. It's also coming to PC. Uh, no word on if it's coming to other systems. Right. Something right. that is not coming to other systems, though, um, is Wolverine. Sony showed off a teaser for Wolverine. Uh, they didn't get a release date, but it's being made by Insomniac Games, the developer behind Marvel Spider-Man on PS4 and PS5. Now, when that's they a big the deal. Yeah. When they showed the trailer and it said Marvel and Insomniac, I'm like, oh, another Spider-Man game? And then they showed the bar and a dude in flannel. I'm like, oh, this is Wolverine. <laughs> and it was. It was Wolverine. And that now I'm very. I, I I liked. What was the one for the GameCube? The F X Men Two Wolverine's Revenge. Yes, I liked that. I also liked the movie Wolverine game. That yes, was, uh, yeah, that was for Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty with, with Hugh Jackman in it. Yeah, that people say that's the best Wolverine game. Um, I don't really fault them for that. Um. I'm curious to see what Insomniac does with this because that Wolverine game was rated M because it went all out with Wolverine's uh, violence. And Logan recently showed us that people really respond to Wolverine's all out violence. Um, but will, will they allow Insomniac to do that or will they go the more T route? It'd oh, be they better get see. violent. I, well, I mean, it looks uh, the tra the small trailer we saw looked pretty brutal. I mean, there's no blood coming out of his claws, right. which is a little unfortunate. Right. <laughs> well, he's got bloody knuckles, so true. And he's It'll about to cool get to stabbed. See. I mean, he's got to be a little gruesome because yeah. he's got the healing factor, so he's got to yeah. be able to get ripped apart a little bit. True. So, but that's not it, because Insomniac also announced Spider-Man Two. The sequel to 2018's Spider-Man. Um, it looks like you'll be playing as both Spider-Man, Peter Parker, and Miles Morales. Um, they also showed Venom. 
is going to be in the game, a voice by Candyman himself, Tony Todd. And um, that was Craven the Hunter talking. I don't care what anyone says. IGN had a poll like, who's talking in that trailer? It's obviously fucking Craven the Hunter. Yeah, I was also uh, confused about that because I was like, oh, it's Craven the Hunter. And then they sh- and then they bait and switched and showed Venom at the end of the trailer. Yeah, well, it, it's obviously Craven because he's talking about like he spent his life looking for the proper opponent. And no one could beat him. Like that's Craven. Yeah, that's Craven. He's he's been looking for the perfect game, and it's, to him, Spider Man is uh the perfect game. And I guess he's talking to Venom because either A, he wants to hunt Venom instead of Spider Man, or B, he's teaming up with Venom to hunt Spider Man. Yeah, I thought that would be a really interesting storyline because the Craven yeah. story is really good. Like when he's yeah. when he, spoilers, he murders F- Spider Man and buries him alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't technically murder him. There's a. It's a whole thing. <laughs> yes. Of course. Well, yeah. That was a weird. It gets comic. complicated with Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I should note that as of now, both Wolverine and uh, Spider-Man 2 are PS5 only. Well, I see a lot of games here. I got I got my headset to work. Now I'm switching over. Uh, Yes, now I'm switching over to Bluetooth. Okay. Oh, I have to unplug these headphones first, and then I can switch over to Bluetooth. Sorry, podcast listeners, but we're doing science today. <laughs> uh, I'll just say that so far, all of these games have been PS5 exclusive. Uh, this showcase was really... They had some PS4 titles, so PS4, PS5 titles, but this really seemed to be their whole, like, we're going to have PS5-only games much sooner than you think. Uh, Wolverine has no date. Uh, Knights of the Republic has no date, but Spider-Man 2... Is currently dated for 2023. Yeah, that's a long time out. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Okay, well, I'm connected. Everybody in this cat chat keeps telling me that you can't do this. Uh, I know that Nintendo said you can't, but Nintendo lies a lot, and I need to, I need definitive proof that you can't do this. Um, yeah. I just got kicked out of the match because I was idle. So we'll try it again. Anyway, okay. Um, what else do we got here? God of War Ragnarok officially named and trailer reveal. Um, I thought we knew that it was called God of War Ragnarok. Apparently, this they made it official here, which is news to me. Anyway, um, we got a better look at the next entry with a full trailer and the God of War Ragnarok title, which is heavily speculated from the previous teaser was revealed the trailer shows kratos and his son atreus who is unsurprisingly a bit older it's there's clear tension between the two which may which many expected following the 2018 game um this is a ps4 ps5 game um but i don't know how this is going to run on ps4 i know how this is the same engine a ps5 game (laughs) so so did you see I, 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 Did you I, see that one tweet where where somebody's like, "Oh, Kratos is using the same animation. Fuck yes. this game." Yes, I did see that. Uh, of course, the the graphics elitists, uh, the, the 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 Pokemon look at the trees people were very upset about uh, yeah. how how this game looks a lot like the original uh, God of War. Actually, um, w- when it was first shown. People were a little confused if this was actually even Ragnarok or if this was just a, yeah. a, a port of the other God of War, the PlayStation 4 God of War. Um, yeah. But no, it's I mean, you saw that uh, the boy was aged up a little bit. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, this is, a, this is a new game. And, and this is the first time we're ever seeing gameplay footage of Ragnarok. But I, I'm yeah. with you. I thought it was called Ragnarok. I thought we all knew that. Yeah. Because we got it. The, uh, the first teaser was a reveal of the of the title of the logo. I thought I thought so. Yeah. Apparently not. Well, anyway, it looks great. I was. Did you, how much of the original? How much of the last God of War did you play? I beat it. Oh, how I thought how, how I you thought like I thought it got better as it went on. I agree with you. The combat, at least the way they set it up initially, was not as great as everyone was saying it was 
and it was overly complicated. You have a skill tree that you barely use. Um, but as like you play through it, especially after you unlock the Blades of Chaos, spoiler alert, um, it does become a lot better. Um, and you start to get the hang of it more. Um, it was just weird that they made a, th a third-person melee combat game and they made the controls and the camera like a third-person shooter. <laughs> um yeah i so i wasn't i wasn't that like like i liked it i thought it was was really good but i i i was kind of burnt out by that style of combat i think a lot of games steal that combat i really didn't think it did that much innovative it was beautiful and uh yeah. it was a beautiful game and uh the story was really good but i couldn't bring myself to play that same style of combat for another like 18 freaking hours yeah anyway uh i'm playing uh rogue company now and yeah uh, who who would have guessed uh the mic doesn't work <laughs> okay uh so i got bluetooth audio running good though well, that's good and i just died so there okay. goes that now we can resume regular podcast so bluetooth audio works and it works pretty damn good everything sounded great hooray Hooray! Just don't expect uh, to use your microphone, and you can't plug in a microphone. Like if you have if you have regular headphones that that you can plug in that have a mic, you can't use them. The game yells at you. Yeah. Uh, the system yells at you. So, uh, no voice chat, unfortunately. Uh, speaking of unfortunately, Tiny Tina's Wonderland uh, is coming out uh, March twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. A board, uh, the Borderlands spinoff got a trailer at the PlayStation Showcase. It looks like Borderlands. I love Borderlands. It's That's unfortunate. It. I don't like Gearbox, so I don't play these games. Uh, yeah, my friends were all trying to be all hyped about it, and I don't like they like none of them played Borderlands three. <laughs> like they played it and then like kind of like forgot they had they owned it. My one friend can't even play it because it wouldn't load on his PC. So that, oh, I love I love uh, I love PC gaming boys. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, so after that is a game called Project Eve, which I thought looked a lot like this. I think it's called Black Desert Online, the, a Korean yeah. MMO that has uh, a really robust character creation. Um, yeah. And apparently it's made, this is made by a Korean studio. So uh, yeah, I don't know if it has uh, any relation Project to Black Desert Online, though. Uh, I don't think it does. If uh, per this article, action game Project Eve felt like a bit of a mystery when it was first appeared on screen, but the upcoming PS5 possible exclusive seems promising in a trailer from today's showcase. We see the titular Eve in fight scenes as she makes her way through the subway in a post-apocalyptic setting. Um, it's this is a game that's like very flashy and there's a lot going on, but nothing I see really screams next gen to me like this feels like something that could have been on a ps4 maybe not as pretty as it is but i don't i don't see anything that warrants next gen lots honestly. of particle effects and whatnot particle um effects. but yeah it is really and the lighting everything's lighting a yeah. lot of these games it doesn't look like uh, they deserve to be PlayStation 5 games, but it's all in the lighting and the amount of, like, like assets on screen, like the particles and, and, yeah. and, and stuff. Um, I mean, it yeah. looks good. Don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't look next gen. We're getting a lot of uh, uh, Bayonetta vibes off of this game. Yeah, uh, which is fine. Cause combat's very who Bayonetta. Who knows what Bayonetta... Yeah. Who knows where Bayonetta 3 is. <laughs> True. Uh, so, yeah, I don't... I mean, this game looks really good. I don't know how much I would play of it. I don't know yeah. how interested I would be in a game like this. Um, But anyway, after that... Uncharted, <laughs> Thieves' End, and Lost Legacy are getting PC ports and PS5 remasters as part of the Legacy of Thieves collection coming out in early 2022 very interesting uh i think the most interesting yes. part is that this is pc yeah um i guess sony is like really getting serious about putting more of their games on pc 
um, which is good. I think that's a step into that's a step towards matching what Microsoft offers with their Xbox games. (laughs) Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, all these games have been out for a while, so it's not that weird that they would branch out into into PC. Yeah. Uh, But uh, yeah, this is uh, not really big news because it's uh, uh, we've seen these games before. Yeah. This is this is not particularly uh, exciting. I forgot to talk about this in my roundup in uh in on the clips channel, but uh uh-huh. Rainbow Six Extinction. Extraction. This is, I think extraction, I'm sorry. This is the first game they showed, I think. Or one of the first it was like Looks the first like- game that I saw. It was yeah. it was in the very beginning of of, of the of mm-hmm. the I think I came in a little late, but this was in the very beginning of the of the of the thing. Uh I fucking hate everything about this. I hate that this game exists. I, it's just, it's so weird. Because when Tom Clancy was alive, he he didn't want to make Splinter Cell at all because the night, the tri-point night vision goggles were unrealistic. Mm-hmm. And now we have a zombie apocalypse game in his series, yeah. Rainbow Six, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Yeah, Rainbow Six is like an is like an espionage, like SWAT game, yeah. and and like global terrorist, like UN uh, politics game, or or, yeah. or I guess book that turned into a game, and now we have zombies. I I. Yeah. It's like a Left for Dead like knockoff. I hate this. I loved Rainbow yeah. Six, and then they they made uh, Rainbow yeah. Six uh, Siege, and Siege. I didn't like Siege when it first came out because it wasn't a good game when it first came out, and it got a lot better after that. But it's still not the sort of Rainbow Six that I liked. Uh, but uh, even still, over like the years. Siege was still in that like overall realm, yeah. of you know Tom, the Tom Clancy like style, you know, mm-hmm. a very grounded. Uh, quote unquote realistic approach to military shooter and now it's this <laughs> this does just doesn't make any sense it's it's I, I read an article the other day about like the weirdest uh, uh season finale uh, the weirdest season finale in 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 tv shows like uh-huh. uh uh, like how there was one show some british show that was like a like a drama and at the very the very last episode all of a sudden they all like like gained superpowers and were able to like rewrite the episode and like it got all weird and like like meta this seems like uh if they took uh i don't know like uh what's a very serious movie like fucking uh, uh- like, Schindler's List. <laughs> sure, it's like they took Schindler's List, and all of a sudden the 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 Nazis were zombies, or all of a sudden the Nazis were aliens at the end. You turn it turned out they were yeah. aliens, and you and they came, and then you go into space and fight them there. Like this doesn't it, it, this is a complete tone shift for the the series that makes no sense. Um, I I I don't I I'm not I'm not down. I'm not down for that at all. I mean, and maybe I it, it could end like, up being a good game, but it's just not. Don't be, call it, it Rainbow Six. You couldn't make the argument that, like, well, Call of Duty does the same thing with their zombie mode, but, like, they keep that separate. Yeah. It's like an add on to, like, the main game, which is still, like, the quasi grounded military skirmishes and stuff. It's like a it's like a parody. The, the zombie mode in Call of yeah. Duty is a parody of the main game. The main game is very yeah. serious. Um, until they do the advanced warfare stuff, and then it's a little fantastical. Yeah. But that's in the future. Like yeah. if they added even, a future still, like, mode for Rainbow Six, it'd be a little different. Yeah, because like that was basically the last few Ghost Recons. It was like Future Tech. Well, not sorry, the last few good Ghost Recons were Future Tech. <laughs> but like that was still like quasi believable. This isn't right. Uh, anyway, the next game. Uh, uh for spoken. spoken so this one's this uh, this one's a little weird spring 2022 release we already knew that it would uh come sometime next year but this latest time frame helps narrow things down sony previously said the game will be a limited ps5 exclusive as well so i guess we'll see it on other systems uh i don't know about this one so 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 
I, when I first saw it, uh, there was a shot in the trailer that I saw, and I this was when I first tuned into the to tuned into the thing. Uh, I didn't know what I was watching. I thought this was a like a bad indie film or something because this yeah. looked like a bad green screen. But uh, I think that's the game looks really good, like really pretty. Yeah. I just think that I, I, it's like at the point in the uncanny valley where like it looks like a bad film. <laughs> yeah. Like it's too far over the uncanny valley. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't like the dialogue. It sounded weird. I don't like. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I was like. It was like overacted. It's, it's like that. It's like that. Like hip, cool, Joss Whedon style dialogue where like you got the one snarky girl like yeah trying to like like not really taking it seriously and like she's too cool and like they contrast her with like the voice in her head or whatever that's like taking it very seriously and stuff and the, the gauntlet thing that talks to her yeah. I feel like for an entire game that could, that could get on my nerves. So it's uh it's like some mystical magical thing. It, it looks again yeah. like like every other AAA game third person uh use it, you're using magic as like as like a a ranged weapon. Um mm -hmm. it's very pretty the 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 next geny style is the lighting and the uh the particle effects. There's a lot of particle effects. Um there doesn't seem to be a UI at all in the game yeah uh, i hope it stays like that because it's it, it shows how beautiful the game is one of the settings they say is new york city but it doesn't sh they don't show it I, I don't think right um it's probably going to be really good i just uh it, again it just looks like a friggin it looks like every other i'm, I'm like jaded by all these triple a games yeah and 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 some uh, people think that it's an all female cast, which might be a thing. It, it might be like, uh, why the last man? It might just be like a plot point. Um, okay. The gauntlet is a dude, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know exactly what the story is. Um, but the, all the different things that she can do looks pretty cool. I'm interested in the in the uh, platforming. There seems to be some platforming going yeah. on. Uh, but yeah, that's spring 2022. Mm -hmm. then you should be excited about this alan wake yes uh epic games already announced that 2010's alan wake will get a remaster but the game still ha got a highlight during the showcase the re-release will be available on ps4 and ps5 xbox and pc uh alan wake originally gained traction more than a decade ago as a cult xbox classic so it's cool to see this title expand to other platforms it is cool more people should play this game it's very good very interesting this doesn't look all that much different from the original 360 version though <laughs> this does not look next gen in the slightest like i know there's like some more detail and lighting shit but this still looks like the 360 game yeah the I character have... models look like look like 360 character models i think that sony's giving us more of a reason to want a playstation 5 in that some of these games are only going to be on playstation 5 but uh mm -hmm. i'm really not like feeling the uh need for next gen right now i feel like we're just yeah. getting like like l like lighting is not something that was ever important to me in a video game <laughs> <laughs> like like we've talked about this before the difference between console generations like the difference now between playstation 4 and playstation 5 it's not changing any mechanics of a game Although, yeah, it's although so... lighting is a mechanic in Alan Wake. Yes, yes, I was <laughs> so, going to say. So maybe they could do something there. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. Um, I def look, look, definitely get this game if you haven't played Alan Wake. Um, it's it's great. Um, it's going to include the, the two DLC episodes. It's going to not include all the product placement that was in the original because there's a lot of fucking product placement in that game. Um, but that shouldn't take away from your experience. Not seeing Energizer batteries everywhere or <laughs> Microsoft sync in your Ford Focus that you drive. Right, right. Um. Anyway, next we got Grand Theft Auto Five is coming to to making up games to... from the Xbox 360. <laughs> this is now the uh the 
hold on we got okay we got xbox 360 we got playstation 3 we got xbox one we got xbox uh, we got playstation 4 we got pc and now we got playstation 5 that is the sixth yes console this thing is on uh both grand theft auto 5 and grand theft auto online will be um coming out in march 2022 which is the delay from uh i think november 11th was its original launch date um people are fucking mad about this <laughs> people really want uh gta 6 uh you're not gonna see yeah. that for a really 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 long time yeah it oh yeah, that was another thing they said like improved visuals and like gameplay enhancements there and people are watching the show going fucking what gameplay enhancements <laughs> i mean uh loading times are gonna be great oh yeah oh seamless character switching was yeah. another one they added he's putting there that was in the original release <laughs> yes um yeah no one's gonna play uh the single player again uh but the online i could see a lot of people still buying this for the online yeah well i can see I'm not going to say that no one's ever going to play the single player again. Um, but yeah, Grand Theft Auto Online really is the, sh the show now. Um, but that said, look, if you want Grand Theft, Auto, Grand Theft Auto 6, don't buy this. Yeah. If, if you don't buy it, look, Rockstar's got enough money to make Grand Theft Auto 6 right now. If you don't buy this, then there's, you know, profits are going to go down. They're going to need something to get people back on their side, and then they'll have to make Grand Theft Auto 6 uh grand theft auto 5 is the is one of the best-selling games month after month after month yes uh, i'm trying to pull up uh last month's top selling games uh yeah. do i not see grand theft auto uh, i think grand theft auto I might have taken email. a dip yeah see my email what yeah because you, your gmail i came up in the corner I was trying to warn you. Oh, whoops. Well, everybody sent me an email. Um, oh, maybe people are not going to buy it. Maybe this is worldwide. Maybe. Also, it doesn't include digital. A lot of people are probably yeah. buying that shit digital. Uh, Minecraft is still one of the top selling games. Uh, anyway... Uh, anyway, Ghostwire Tokyo got a trailer. So uh, Ghostwire looks awesome. I'm down for Ghostwire. It does. Looks very good. I don't uh, know what the hell type of game it is though. It's like a first person it's like first a person magic magic shooter. thing. Yeah. Uh, it was delayed till 2022, but we finally got like some more gameplay footage out of it. So that's cool. Excited I, I, for that. I'm interested because this looks like a different type of game. Like, uh, yes. I'm. This looks like it's it's not going to be like all of the other AAA games we've been playing recently. This looks like yeah. uh, it's going to be a little bit different, and I'm I'm, I'm down yeah. for that. And it's Shinji Mikami, the creator of Resident Evil. So, and uh, what's her name? Was the uh, yes, but she doesn't work for the for the director. company anymore. Yeah, but she probably did a yeah. bulk of the work. I forgot her name, but True. she's great. And yeah. she, she got famous from uh, from showing this game off. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Deathloop is here, but the video's unavailable. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, we got where Deathloop is. They, they showed off Deathloop one more time before the game came out. Um, everyone seems to be enjoying it. Uh, I just pre-ordered it because I forgot that the game was out. <laughs> So here's Scootish on Twitch playing Deathloop. Uh, I'm really excited about this game. All uh, I think Polygon just put up an article that says uh, Deathloop is one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> so like, yeah. uh, people are holding this game in high regard, and I'm down with the concept of like fighting off NPCs and then randomly another real life player can just come yeah. in and fuck you up. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty interested in this game. Made by Arcane uh, Studios, they did uh Dishonored. Dishonored, yeah, yeah. Yes. Dishonored one, excellent game. Have not played the second one yet, uh, but Dishonored One is very good. I played it at a press event and I was 
interested because you can do a lot of stealth stuff and this game uh, looks yes. pretty similar yes so uh i will i'll pro- hopefully stream this sometime this weekend uh but yeah mm-hmm. i just i should be getting it like tomorrow uh anyway what else we got uh guardians of the galaxy is open for pre-order um it's set for release on october 26th uh and this video showcased the story mode of the game all about the guardians of the galaxy doing guardians of the galaxy like things so i'm not interested at all but you are interested in this game because you were telling me that the main shtick is that you only play as star lord and the whole game is you trying to cultivate uh your relationship with the other guardians of the galaxy Yes. Uh, there was an example in the original reveal where, like, um, you have to get across, like, a a gap in a road, um, and you had all these options, and the guy picked have Drax throw Rocket across the gap to build the bridge, and then later on in the demo, Rocket wouldn't help Quill because he remembered what just happened. Right. So things like that, it seems like a, a much more, like, dynamic and evolved version of what like telltale used to do um and then putting it into like an action game with uh where you know peter's relationship with the guardians is like the crux of that series right right so it'd be interesting to see how it plays out otherwise seems like every other triple a game to me (laughs) yeah um and then we got kid um uh Kid Amnesia Amnesia Exhibition. A collaboration between Radiohead and Epic Games, Kid Amnesia Exhibition is a bit of a head-scratcher for the showcase. The limited look did give uh, many hints as to what to expect, but it seems intriguing. Um, Who actually likes Radiohead? (laughs) They're okay. Uh, Like, who? Actually, like I don't. I think I know like one person who has said she liked Radiohead, and ever since then, it's like they're just the band the internet always reminds me is out there. Creep is good. Creep is good. Karma Police is good, but I, I can't tell you a single song that's on either Kid A or Amnesia, and this is a combination of both of them. You know what the problem is? I like a lot of bands that like Radiohead. <laughs> Yeah. It's the same problem with like uh what do you call it? Blade Runner. Like uh <laughs> like that movie is not that great, but it spawned a lot of great things. And I've seen all yeah. of the great things that it spawned, so going back and watching Blade Runner, it's not that exciting. I like a lot of the things that Radiohead spawned, but going back and listening to Radiohead, it's not that exciting. Um uh but anyway, who's the other one? Uh Depeche Mode? Is that the other one? That's like the same. Oh yeah, I I do not like the Pesh mode at all. <laughs> uh, or am I thinking of? I might be thinking. What's a what's the? I'm thinking of a different band. But yeah, there's like a hardcore band that's like the same. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I get what you're saying about Radiohead. Yeah. Uh, next up uh, we got Ch- Chia. In the same cartoony style as Wind Waker and Link's Awakening remake, uh, Chia seems like an adorable game. The trailer showed off a tropical world where the game takes place. Uh, I think this is where I tuned out. (laughs) I didn't like how this trailer started off with the uh, Last of Us style guitar playing. Yeah. But this seems like the obligatory, like, uh, this could be a game for kids. Yeah. It It looks like a fun little, like, adventure game. Yeah, because I mean, it could be all right for all I know. Uh, then we got Gran Turismo stuff, which I definitely tuned out for because Gran Turismo is always Gran great Turismo, and it always looks pretty. Gran Turismo 7 is coming to PS4 and PS5 uh, March 4th, 2022. Uh, then we got Blood Hunt, Horror Battle Royale set in the Vampire the Masquerade universe coming to PS5 later this year, already sh- uh, shown off for the PC. So the Sony partnership is a new development. Hopefully, this also means crossplay. It actually looks kind of, now that she pulled the sword out. It actually, looks kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like this would be cool if they did this for like a Jedi Academy. If they made like a battle royale for like yeah. a Jedi Academy, and then she pulled out a sword, and I was like, wait, that's basically what this is. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't think I would play this. Um, yeah, and that was it. Yeah, 
Uh, so overall, I think that uh, Sony usually has very bad uh, state of play announcements. It's usually like three yeah. games that we already knew about that they're showing more footage of. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not really that exciting. This had a lot of stuff we didn't know about, a lot of new, uh, a lot of first looks at things we might have already known about, uh, some some big drops that we didn't know were going to happen at all. Uh, so there was a lot of exciting stuff here and a lot of reasons to maybe mm -hmm. consider a PlayStation 5. So overall, I was very happy with this showcase, even though I'm probably not going to play most of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, there definitely was like something for everyone. Um, you had your big name titles, you had your smaller stuff, you had your surprises, you had your um, old standbys like Gran Turismo and Uncharted and things like that. Um, I definitely think like now we're going to start to see like more of the big games and more of the important games come out for not just ps5 but also series x as well especially once halo comes out um so i think this is the good this is the good official start to this generation even though they're still releasing a lot of these games on ps4 one of the interesting things is that the 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 game everybody's loving right now that's playstation 5 exclusive uh is made by an xbox studio uh yep uh what the hell is it called? Uh, Death Loop is, is Ar yeah. It was bought by a uh, Arcane was bought yeah by a uh, Xbox Microsoft because Arcane was bought by Bethesda, owned by Bethesda. Yeah, so that exclusivity is probably going to be timed. Uh, this yeah. this game was uh well it was already it was always supposed before. to be timed, right? It was already it was already supposed it was already timed, but I think now it's just more so timed. Right, right. Anyway, uh, let's try to plow through more stuff because we are already very late. Um, yes. Um, PS5 I want to say... Is getting, uh, oh, hold on. Before you do that, Mega Dragon with 10 bits. Will, with a new Spider-Man and Wolverine game coming to PlayStation, do you think PlayStation is starting to become known as the go-to console for Marvel games? No. Um, it's very weird that, Mar that Sony is getting two exclusive Marvel games, though. Um, well, because Guardians and Avengers is on multiple platforms, they do like Marvel has a deal with Square Enix to make games and other studios. So, I'm just it's just it is interesting that you know, Spider Man was one thing, but now that you throw Wolverine in the mix, I'm curious to see like what that means for the future of Marvel games, right? Uh, anyway, uh, oh, and Spoopy Girl, thank you for the five get this subs, I appreciate it. Uh, Moving on, yes, PlayStation 5 September system software update launches globally tomorrow. So, Wednesday. Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of PS5 UX enhancements. Uh, center, yeah, control center customization. You can customize, you know, the button layout of the control center. Uh, players can now easily view and write messages to friends and parties directly from the game base in the control center. Uh, <clears throat> here's Here's a fun thing. Game library and home screen updates. If you have PS4 and PS5 versions of the same game installed, they will now appear separately in the install tab of the game library on the home screen. Each game's tile now also clearly indicates its platform. So before, if you had both the PS4 and the PS5 version installed, you have to go to the game and then select it from there. Now they're two separate files. And you can clearly see one's the PS4 version, one's the PS5 version. Baby this is a steps. Good, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a good first step towards not having this fucking problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just put the just put the disc in and give me the PS5 version. It took four years <clears throat> for Nintendo to get uh Bluetooth audio to work. Yeah. It's taken PlayStation uh almost a year to let us differentiate the PlayStation 4 version to the PlayStation 5 version. So yeah. uh baby steps here. Uh, but that's not even, like that's a that's a very important feature. That's not the yeah, main no, feature no, of this no, update. Is. No, um, you also got new gaming and social customizations. PlayStation Now resolution uh, selector and connection test. You can now select if you want to stream your PlayStation Now games in 720p or 1080p. Um, you got a new uh new multiplayer accolades. 
uh, automatic capture of personal best videos, uh, new trophy tracker, 3D audio support for built-in TV speakers. The PlayStation 5 September update also adds support for enhanced uh, 3D audio through built-in TV speakers. Once enabled in the sound menu, this feature transforms standard two-channel TV speaker audio into three-dimensional sound, heightening, heightening the sense of gameplay immersion. Uh, players can measure the acoustics of their room using the microphone on their DualSense controller to apply the 3D audio setting that's optimal for their room. Get to the fucking one that everybody cares about. <laughs> uh, M.2 SSD storage yes. expansion. Finally. Yes. Finally. Finally. You, you can now finally uh, plug in your uh, hard drive if you wanted. If you want yeah. a, a hard drive that can run place to if you wanted to expand the storage of your playstation 5 to run playstation 5 games off of that expanded hard drive yes. so you can pop you can finally use that m.2 drive that's sitting under the uh flap of the of the playstation 5 now this was talked mm -hmm. about in a story a few months ago because uh there was a beta for this software update that was out but now yeah. it will finally be out to the public uh, it's been almost a year that this console has been yes. out and we're finally getting to use expandable storage on the PlayStation 5. Um, this is a pretty big deal. A and yes. we talked about this again before. There's only certain drives you can use because uh, the size of the heat sink matters. They have to actually be able to fit in here. And uh, uh, the Digital Foundry the and Eurogamer have, uh, have a good roundup of the ones that work. It's the size of the heat sink, the size of the drive itself, um, and the um, read-write speed are what's important. So if you have an older gen M.2 drive, it might not work. Right. Uh, so check the list of supported drives before you go out and buy one. Yeah. Uh, if you have one already, I mean, pop it and see what happens. Um, yeah. Also, there are people saying that it might get a little hot in there, so... Uh, Having a heat sink is preferred, even though it's it's a tight squeeze. Um, yeah, I'm excited about this. Uh, I, yeah. I, 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 the PlayStation Five only has 850 gigabytes in it, which is not a lot, mm. especially for next gen or current gen games. So uh, yeah. this is a uh, good to have. But M.2 drives are a little pricey. Uh, I yeah. thought it would be a good idea to make a video on this. Uh, it's still in the cards. I don't know, uh, but. Uh, Maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't really want to spend the money on an M.2 drive. I don't really need yeah. that much storage on my PlayStation 5. Uh, but anyway, that's good news. Still no 1440p yes. resolution on the on no. the uh, PlayStation 5, which is unfortunate because 1440p is how a lot of people would be able to experience 120 frames per second. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's not available on the PlayStation 5 for some weird reason. Uh, but yes, expandable storage, great news. Uh, I'm going to talk about this real quick and then we'll rapid fire the rest of the okay. news. I played WarioWare. WarioWare to get it together. It is a great two to three hours. That's how long the main campaign is. Now, a lot of people Damn. are telling me it has a lot of replayability because there's a lot of mini games, and the goal is to play them faster and, uh, you know, do them over and over again. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. Um, and honestly, uh, I watched, uh, a little bit of Jackson playing it of scootish and, uh, I saw many games that I didn't even play when I played the campaign. So there, there's oh, stuff wow. that I missed. Um, there is probably other game modes that I didn't try out. I am very, very, very disappointed that the multiplayer is only local and there's no oh, fucking reason wow. at all for it to only be local. It doesn't make any sense, but it's Nintendo doing their own dumb thing that they always do. Yeah. Um, so the, the only online there is is a leaderboard for like a daily challenge or a weekly challenge or something. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it is a great game, but it's very short. Uh, I don't know if everybody who plays it is going to get a lot of time out of it. I mean, I don't know if everybody who plays it is going to want to replay it over and over again. Um, right. Maybe I'll jump back in and try to see what other modes there are. Um, but it's got a 75 on Metacritic, which I think is a little high for the game being $50 and not having that much in it. 
Yeah. So I'm going to watch some reviews, I guess, and see what more I can squeeze out of the game. But as of right now, I'm a little disappointed in, in, in the game. It's very good. It was a very good two to three hours, but it was only two to three hours. So for $50, I'm a little disappointed about that. If it was an right. amazing two to three hours, I would say it's worth $50. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Anyway, that's my Wario word take. Okay. Now let's rapid fire through this rest of the stuff. Analog pocket. Right. Fucking delayed. <laughs> delayed again to December 2021. Uh, pocket pre-orders will ship at, at the latest in December. Unfortunately, due to new COVID restrictions with our assembly partners, their capacity to d- deliver within our agreed time frame has been affected. This has created a domino effect. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Basically, it had to get delayed one more time. If you pre-ordered it, you should get an email um, basically saying exactly all of this. I got it. It does say exactly all of this. Um, so, yeah, it sucks, but it looks like Analog uh, is at least acknowledging it and is trying to keep everybody as up to date as possible. Um, so hopefully things do work out and it comes in December. This is the third time, right? Yes. Uh, this is the third time it's been delayed. I think people were expecting this. Uh, Analog's usually really good with stuff. Um, yeah. But for whatever reason, they're having a really hard, a really hard time with uh, getting the parts for this thing. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, Analog's not that big of a company, so I I understand because like and everything they're like do is like custom made and like very high quality. So, like, I understand there's, like, a big delay, why there would be a big delay in something like this. I, you know, I have faith, because, like, all their stuff that they put out has been good, and they delivered on, like, you know, with the Mega SG and the Super NT and whatnot. They delivered on those, and they've shown they can put out good products. So, I'm hoping that this delay is just, you know, for what they said there it is, because of, like, problems with their manufacturer and whatnot. So there, there's potential for this. This is very exciting because there's potential for this to be the best handheld gaming device ever made, and it's mm-hmm. not even made by Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it, it if it comes out. <laughs> so <laughs> it says on their website, if you go to pre-order, it says ships October 21st. I mean, I, I'm sorry, it says ships October 2021. Oh wow, uh, which is weird because that means oh wait, you can't even you can't even pre-order. Yeah, it, it probably wasn't even updated. Yeah. So that's interesting. So it's delayed until December or or December, next? yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's unfortunate. Even all of the accessories are out of stock. Yeah. Uh but yeah, we're excited for that cuz uh analog makes yes. really good stuff and that looks like the best thing they've ever made and I have high yep. hopes for that. Uh okay. Uh next we got Jake Jake from State Farms in NBA 2K21. I saw this and I think it's stupid. <laughs> Yeah, because um, that's what you want from your basketball game. You want a cameo from an advertisement spokesperson. <laughs> Not this... the actor, but the character, Jake from State Farm, is in the game. Basically trying to sell you State Farm insurance. I'm this... pretty sure he even says, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. They do. I saw this. And it's like an, ah, you said the thing, like type, type yeah. deal. Um, and then you can get his outfit in the game. Uh, yeah. This this looks terrible. This like uh, this looks like a very PlayStation Three game right now. I know. I don't know what it is about this, but uh, yeah, this is dumb. I hate I hate uh, I hate integrated ads like this, especially in such a like a like a big AAA game like it like a sports game. Like it's already like a like well, an so advertisement. Like, <laughs> like no. the game already exists so, like, as an advertisement. I get, like, because they want to recreate, like, the feel of watching an NBA game on TV. So I get, like, having ads on, like, the co- the side of the court or, like, you know, it pops up in the little cryon in the, the lower third of the screen. Okay, I get that. But, like, to stop the game, to walk up to Jake from State Farm, to have dialogue with him, to unlock his costume, to have him say the slogan, like, that's that's too far. That's enough. Uh, all right. Next, we have uh, the L- Lego has a new Nintendo thing. Oh my God, it's loud! It's very loud. Uh, yeah, it's the question block. Yo, this is sick. <laughs> it's 
it's it's it's Finally. Super Mario 64. Finally, Bob likes the Lego Mario thing. <laughs> well, I like the Lego NES. True. I forgot about that. I didn't like building it, but I like it. <laughs> oh, then you're going to love building this. I don't think I'm going to get this. I, I was thinking about it, but I don't want to make a video on it, so I don't think I'm going to get it. Uh, oh, no. The block set will be exclusively available from the Lego retail stores and Lego.com on October 1st. Uh, from 2002, the the, it will become available at other leading retailers around the world uh, for the recommended retail price of $169.99 US dollars. Honestly, I mean, it's Lego. So, like, I, I expected I expected as much. How big is and it? And it does look like there's a lot of, like, moving parts and shit. Yeah, I mean, it looks... It looks like it might be, like, one foot by one foot or, like, ten inches. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, no, the top flips up and there's three Mario worlds. You have the uh you have Peach's Castle, you have uh 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 Babam Battlefield, and you have uh yeah. the Ice One, whatever that is called. Yeah. So this this looks friggin' sick. Oh, and there's like yeah. an underworld looking thing. Oh, it's like the, the basement of Peach's Castle, I think. Oh nice. That's really cool. Uh but yeah, yeah I don't know if I wanna build it. <laughs> um Maybe I'll just make somebody else do it in the video. There you go. Uh, so yeah, anyway, that looks cool. Uh, next, we'll talk about App Epic and Apple. Uh, there's a ruling on their on their uh, uh, yes. on their court case that we've talked about a few times here on the show. Um, I mean, there was a lot. I'll just see if I can hit the bullet points. Uh, the Fortnite suit is, is about mobile game payments, not iOS apps or a bigger or game market during the trial both sides argued over which uh, market Fortnite's iOS app belonged belonged to Epic claimed that Apple had abused a monopoly on the iOS app ecosystem Apple claimed Fortnite was playing it was playing in the more competitive overall digital game market Judge uh, Gonzalez Rogers says both of these definitions are wrong although Apple's is somewhat less wrong Instead, mm -hmm. the question is whether Apple has an unlawful monopoly in the digital game mobile uh, transactions. Gonzalez Ro Rogers notes that mobile games often have different user bases than PCs or console games, and they hugely they rely hugely on the freemium model of in-game items and sales, which are less important to both mobile apps and that and console and PC games. Um, so basically, Apple does not have a monopoly on mobile gaming yet. Um, mm -hmm. is what was claimed. The App Store has, does have a troubling lack of competition because uh, it really is only the App Store on iOS, but that's okay. Apple does have, uh, the judge ruled that Apple does have valid security concerns um, over opening up iOS to be more, you know, open source rather than the closed off system that it is. Of uh, Apple has a right to require its in-app payments option. Uh, I don't know if it's written here, but Apple... Uh, oh, yeah. iOS developers have a right to talk about alternatives. So, basically, uh, Epic was not in the wrong for putting a, uh, another payment option for in-app purchases. Uh, so, I'm seeing... I'm seeing that the big deal out of this verdict is that Apple could no longer force developers to use in-app purchasing from 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 Apple through their system. So now yeah. they can. That was, this, this is the whole reason Epic is even doing this in the first place. Well, the whole no, reason they're doing this is because they didn't want to pay that, that extra thirty percent. Well, there was that, but there was also this bigger this bigger argument that like the, because of the whole World's Garden approach to the iOS App Store. And the iOS ecosystem, they were preventing developers from doing more um, than what they could do with the with their apps and their games. They had to follow a very strict uh, guideline in order to get on the App Store. Um, well, well, when, uh, well, when they first, sorry, yeah, when they first put the uh, when they when they first made the big stink. They 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 forced an update in in Fortnite, 
and made it so that uh, the microtransactions were their were the, their own epic system and not Apple, and right. that's why they got kicked off of the store in the first place. So that, that was their was that got... was their big like vigilante like like move. Well, that was what kickstarted the whole thing. But they did right. that in order to open up a larger discussion about other things, like you know Apple's walled garden approach, the fact that it's a closed off system. It's not easy for developers to. Uh, f- you know, interact with the iOS software, um, things like you know the fact that uh, you know Apple wouldn't allow game streaming uh, apps on the App right. Store because it didn't follow their guidelines. The fact that some games uh, aren't allowed on the App Store, but certain apps are, even though they, you know, the apps do things that the games are not allowed to do because they're games. I so, I, I know that. Epic is fighting a lot of things about Apple. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of problems they had. But to me, the biggest problem they had was that uh, uh, in-app purchases needed to be done through Apple's ecosystem, and they take like thirty percent, and it's like a, a like a like a lot. Um, and Apple isn't alone in that. Other other stores take like a lot of money, right. but Apple's the biggest one. So if they if they take down the giant, uh, they could. Uh, they could maybe uh, change the way things are for everybody. And uh, a lot of people saw this big fight between Epic Games and Apple as just two in- incredibly big corporate conglomerates just having a stupid fight and nobody's going to yeah. win in the end. But honestly, if you're a freaking uh, indie game dev, uh, now you have a you potentially will have a better way to make yourself some money. Uh, so I think I think this is a pretty big win for 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 people. Yeah, I did also see somewhere that Epic uh, is required is like they're going to be forced to pay like Apple six six million dollars in uh, damages and law fees over this yes whole process, which is nothing to them. Yeah. So 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 I think that. It's weird because Epic lost the court case, but they won the point they were ma- trying to make. <laughs> they won one of the points they were trying to make. I think that's still... the biggest point that they wanted to make. And then they just that happened to lose everything else. That wasn't the biggest point. That was a bullet point in the overall argument. I always you know, thought that it... was the biggest point. No, that was just that was just the catalyst to like get this the bigger conversation going. Because throughout the whole court case, they would talk about things like Amazon doesn't have to do certain things that we do because we're a video game and Amazon is Amazon. Or mm-hmm. like uh, Netflix gets away with certain things because they're Netflix, but because we make a video game, we have to adhere to certain guidelines. Things like when when they said like uh, in, in the court case, oh, well, uh, Fortnite has nudity in it. That's pornography. Meanwhile, you go on Netflix and there's all these movies with like dicks and boobies in there right and that's okay you know things like that right. all these like weird inconsistencies and like uh iron curtain style like restrictions on app developers and specifically game makers that you know you don't have on other platforms like pc or android even even though they're currently suing google as well uh i think it was the epic store has has the has the nudity or or, or right. grotesque yeah. stuff not not necessarily fortnite right um, uh, though they, they did say that they don't consider ba- banana man to be nude <laughs> that, that, was that was part a, of the court yeah. case that is true uh he might be a giant dick though um yeah. so anyway i think that that ruling is 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 kind of a really big deal and is kind of historic for the game industry i think that's uh, that's right. something that's that that everybody should should i think look at i definitely think so but i don't think really either company like totally won or totally lost like in the grand scheme of things like that one point you know that apps that apple cannot require uh app developers from using their in their their app store and app purchases system like they can have their own system in place in the grants like that's one thing they like apple still doesn't have to open up the app store apple still doesn't have to open up ios um yeah but think because... about how big of a deal that is that 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 now anybody who has an app on the app no, store not, can I'm use their saying, own proprietary I'm not saying it's not a... 
in-app purchase system. No, I'm not saying it's not a big deal. What I'm trying to say is, like, there were there were all these other things that Epic wanted to do, right? And that Apple wanted to do that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So neither one of them really came out on top. Like, Epic got a minor victory because they opened up in-app purchases. Apple got a minor victory because I, I, Epic I, owes them six million dollars. I really think you're downplaying how much of a big deal that was to Epic. The thir- the thirty the, the percent in app purchases. I mean, no, I'm not saying it's not a big deal. I just I don't think th- I don't think that's the sole thing. You're, yeah, well, it's not. They have a like, million different things, but I think that was the biggest thing that they wanted to fight against. I I think I don't know. I only think it's I think it's one of the biggest things because they they really wanted to f- be more in control of their game, not just with the in-app purchases, but overall. But because they were on iOS, a closed-off system, they had mm-hmm. to go through Apple's draconian rule set. Right. I I and, I think that it was a domino effect of of the big deal being the thirty percent, and then all this other shit. They were like, well, we might as well. Because there is a lot of draconian bullshit yeah. that they got to go through to to be on the iOS store. Uh, uh, Circa says Tim Sweeney was e- Tim Sweeney, friend of the show, said uh, yes. uh, was even super disappointed and said it was a loss. Will is right. I'm sa- I'm saying that there is uh, in the gr- <laughs> technically epic lost. But I think the big thing that they were going for, they ended up winning. But uh, technically, in the court case, they owe—they're the ones who owe Apple a bunch of money. <laughs> but in the not future, not even that much money. But in the future, Epic's going to make all that back because they don't have to. Uh, well, actually, they're not going to be on. They're not bringing Fortnite back to the iOS store. Um, yeah. But any other games that Epic has on the iOS store, um, they uh, they can now have their own in-app purchases, and they're going to make way more than $6 million. Mm-hmm. Anyway, for the love of God, there's a, there's a fucking right. Colors app on the Switch. If you plug a stupid stylus in, I pre-ordered it. I will be getting it sometime soon. Uh, it's it's like a friggin' Wacom tablet. I just switched to a Wacom tablet. I can't imagine this being any good, but it released today, and I'm gonna give it a try. Also, for some reason, Sony shuts down Little Big Planet's PlayStation Three and Vita servers. Oh, they shut those down real quick. I'll just say, apparently, there was a big uh, hacking problem with Little Big Planet servers across all platforms. Um, so instead of fixing it on PS3 and Vita, they just kept those servers shut down. They reopened the PS4 servers. Um, so basically, as of right now, the only Little Big Planet you can game you can play online is Little Big Planet Three on PS4. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you can if you if you hadn't done so already, you could have imported your Little Big Planet One and Two uh, levels and save files into Little Big Planet Three and played it on the PS4. Um, so I hope you did that because otherwise you can't play Little Big Planet. So uh, yeah, those systems have been on the outs for a little bit. Uh, so yeah. I don't. I mean, I think everybody kind of could have, should have probably seen this coming. Yeah. All right, that's all the news. Yes. We're very late. I'm gonna try to plow yeah. through this real quick. We'll get the unboxing ready. In the meantime, I'm doing tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. Tweet of the week. All right. Tweet of the week. And this is a video from Tim the Tatman. Former Twitch streamer, now YouTube gaming streamer. Uh, he did, he he sung, he made his own song called Waffles Are Better Than Pancakes. And somebody made all of the music to it. It's very funny. Here it is.
he's not wrong. Waffles are better than pancakes. I, that's the official stance of the Wolf Den, is that waffles are better than yeah. pancakes. So I thought that was a phenomenal song. Yes. Anyway, we have some things to unbox. Will, while you okay. do that, I'm going to talk uh-huh. to the chat and last week's Wolf Den Live. Okay. Uh, well, first things first, I guess we'll show off the Retro Fighters uh, Duelist Wireless Gamepad for the Switch and PC. Uh, right. This is the thing that Kevin Kenson was uh, making a video on. Right. So here it is. This is a Switch uh, controller designed to be reminiscent of the GameCube controller. Um, looks nice. I will open it up and play with it later because we are in a rush. Uh, also, I will probably color- make a video on it eventually. What the fuck? What the fuck? Your color live thing came. I just fuck. I need to cancel the. Ah oh, shit. I need to. No, oh, I, mm, I thought I, ah, I thought ah, I, I just bought it on Amazon. I didn't know it's there. Yep, it's oh. here. Uh, Can't, and lastly, Adam. and lastly from uh, Mimi, uh, dear Bob and W, I believe that's me. A uh, little something for you, you to have a bit of fun with. Thanks for always. Thanks as always for your fun content and presence. Hope you have a happy birthday. Cheers. P.S. Sending two in case uh in case you mess in case you mess up or gift one to a friend. It is uh Super Mario gummies, it appears oh, in Japanese. Very nice. I'm happy yeah. about that. I, they're freaking Mario Maker. That's awesome. Oh yeah, they are Mario Maker. Look at that. I'm so cool. I'm so mad. S. Marcy says Will was sitting there cool as a cucumber too while you talked about colors. <laughs> I yo because I, I saw the logo, and then like I put two and two together, and I looked down. I'm like, oh, oh shit! I almost like I was trying to like open it and like actually show you while you were talking, but then you said do tweet of the week and then move on. So I just hit cancel on Amazon, and I immediately got an email that said unable to cancel your order. <laughs> Oh, God damn it. I'll return it. Anyway, um, I mean, that would be a great video for this week, too. I have to, uh, yeah. I have to <laughs> somehow to get, Island. I know, I have to somehow get that from you. Um, because I still haven't even started my video. Yeah, <sighs> God damn it. Anyway, and then we also have the friggin' Retro Fighter Control. There's a lot of, all of a yeah. sudden, a lot of video ideas. I had no video ideas two hours ago. Now I got a lot of video ideas. Anyway, uh, from last week's Wolf Den podcast, we got uh, uh, NBA Clips, who says, my Australian mom said, Will sounds like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. I'll take that as an honor. <laughs> I, I, I think that's ridiculous. Uh, anyway, I was going to do a Kermit voice. I'm not doing a Kermit voice. Lemming77 go. Like he goes, yeah, he's got the flailing arms. Discord is cutting yeah. you off when you do that. I think you're... Discord's like, that's some weird noise. <laughs> <laughs> Lemming77 go says, My, me every episode. How does Will know all this shit? I just do. I am that damn good. Eric Henley says, I think a Game Boy collection without a Pokemon game isn't worth it. Either they should release a separate Pokemon collection at the same time or include it in the main one. This is obviously just my opinion, but I do not care for or remember any other Game Boy games besides Pokemon. None of them were that memorable besides Pokemon. I kind of agree with Eric. Uh, I think it would be a very bad idea to have a Game Boy collection without Pokemon. However, yeah. I think they are going to do that. I I just don't see that happening. Uh, Zonum says, which one is better, Star Wars Republic Commando or Crisis? I think that's a weird question. That is a weird question. They're oh, two very different games. Is it because Crisis is being remade by Aspire? Crisis is being remade. I think, I think it's just asking... Uh, between the two first-person shooters that are on the Switch, which would you re- which is better? And I don't think it's a fair comparison because they're two very different games. One's a squad-based tactical shooter, and one is a uh, first-person stealth sci-fi action adventure. Uh, I think they're both great. Yeah, uh, I think Splinter Cell. I think Crisis Two is 
probably better than Republic Commando, but they're both very good games in their own rights. Yes. Um, anyway, may the goo be with you. No Jorgen von Strangle in Nick Nickelodeon All-Stars, 0 out of 10. Oh, we forgot to say Ren and Stimpy is confirmed for Nicktoons yes. All-Star Battle. Conf- and- confirmed, and it's... Um- uh, plays both at the same time. They're like the Ice Climbers. Yeah, it was previously rumored that they were going to be separate characters. Yes. This is Jorgen Von Strangle, by the way. I had a look oh, at it. Oh, from Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, last one. Ben Bex. Will, what are your thoughts on the new FX Why the Last Man adaptation on Hulu? It comes out on the 13th, and I'm curious if you'd watch it. Uh, I haven't watched it yet, but I do want to watch it. It looks very good. Uh, it's a very good comic book series, even though I always say I'm going to read it, get to the same point, and then stop reading it <laughs> because I'm lazy. Um, I'm going to try and convince my wife to watch it with me, even though I heard the first episode is very gory, and she does not take kindly to that. So, But I will definitely try to watch it in the near future. Here's a weird fact about Why the Last Man. The old singer of the band Patent Pending from Long Island Mm -hmm. owns the original comic art of the cover of Why the Last Man. Really? Yeah. I don't I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know how he acquired it. The original the 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 the, the Y with the guy on it, the like logo. Oh, the first one. Yeah, he owns that that artwork. I don't know how he acquired that, but he owns it. Okay. Um Unless that maybe he the whoever drew that drew it a bunch of times, but I mean I, I saw it with my own two eyes. I mean, why the last man was like that was Brian K. Vaughn's big series before Saga, and that was always popular. But he probably got it like years ago, mm-hmm. you know, when people weren't really collecting comic book covers, especially of like non superhero stuff. Yeah, I I think that he probably didn't expect that to be as big of a deal as it ended up being. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Jay Cannon gave us 300 bits and said the Apple event showed off the first images of the new Star Wars Hunters. I didn't even realize that's what I was watching. Looks like Overwatch style Star Wars multiplayer. That's the game that's going to be on uh, 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 the Switch, but it's also yes. a mobile game. So uh, yes, it's I'm interested in it, but uh, a little skeptical because it's also a mobile game. Uh, yeah. But it kind of looked good. I, 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 I remember what I watched. I didn't put two and two together that it was Star Wars Hunters, yeah. but it looked pretty good. Uh, also, no MacBooks. Yes. Which everyone's now telling me, of course, there was not going to be any MacBooks. But a week ago, everyone was like, oh, I can't wait for the MacBooks. And and it was on that day you learned what it was like to be the Switch 4K people. Yeah. I, I, I was like, uh, this is what it must have felt like for people who like had one eye open for the Switch news and didn't realize mm-hmm. that Nintendo would never do something like that. And now here I am not reading the tea leaves that Apple only releases... Uh, yeah hardware on in october anyway uh speaking of the apple event mecha dragon with 10 bits speaking of apple you bros saw the apple event today um i did underwhelmed by it i started (laughs) watching it i started watching it after the ipad stuff uh the ipad stuff looked kind of cool the ipad mini but then i was like wait i have a phone it's like the same thing um yeah but I am very interested in the video features on the new iPhone uh, 13. Yeah, I, that I seemed like the big thing was that you can do rack focus and on the iPhone 13. And Apple ProRes. <laughs> Apple yeah. ProRes well, video. You, yeah. So uh, I, 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 I already like sometimes will use my... I very sparingly use my phone for videos... Uh, for, for for videos in my YouTube videos, very sparingly I'll use it, but it, it's a good tool for that. Um, I would maybe use an iPhone 13 more because it seems like it has a lot of cool features. And the fact that it has yeah. three lenses and it has six times well uh, optical zoom is sick. Well, that's the Pro. Right, right, right. You would upgrade to the Pro? Uh, yeah. You I would spend the could... $1,000 on? I don't know. I don't. Th- I'm not looking to spend $1,000 right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm totally fine with my phone. But if the video features end up being that great, I would consider it. I do think it's funny that they showed off the rack focus feature with a Knives Out parody, yes. considering that Knives Out, um, that was the movie where Ryan Johnson uh, admitted, okay, so it came out and said that Apple 
will give you their phones and computers to use in your movie for free. So as long as the villain doesn't use it. Wow. <laughs> you didn't hear about that? I did not hear about that. Yeah, Ryan That's Johnson crazy. was doing like a, a breakdown of a scene and he's circling all the phones and he goes, here's something I probably shouldn't say, but <laughs> Apple will give you iPhones to use in movies for free. So as long as the bad guys don't use them. So you could see everybody here holding an Android phone is a bad guy <laughs> wow so that's like in like a murder movie like that's how you could give yeah. away that so now bit. if if you've never seen knives out before go and look to see who's holding an android phone <laughs> that's fucked they're, up they're the bad guys <laughs> so uh uh so people a big deal was that the screen on the new iphone is going to be 120 hertz uh cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i like it's not like a gaming device for me you know like i'm not getting this thing for, yeah. for gaming it's, it's it's literally like a social media tool um and maybe if i don't have a camera on me i'd like to take pictures on, on an iphone and the iphone i have now yeah. takes great pictures so i'm not yeah. too worried um in the wild with 100 bits love the show thanks for making my evening thank you in the wild i appreciate it and mk loomis with the 13 months thank you everybody thank you uh pick like one chat message and then we'll fucking go because we're very okay. late right now uh, uh, Edward Bovo. So, Bob, what do you think of Game Explains three part interviews with Cruise and Blast Switch with creator Edwin Jarvis? Ed, Edward Eugene Jarvis. You always pick Eugene something. Jarvis. You always pick something I know nothing about, and I can't. I literally can't <laughs> comment on it because you're asking me to comment on a thing I'm learning for the first time right now, and that happens all the time. And I feel like you do that on purpose. Um. <laughs> What else do we have? Uh, oh, there's a trailer for Star Wars Hunters, apparently. Uh, $1,000 on a phone sounds nuts unless you immediately put that thing in a small rig cage or something, says Metascension. <laughs> small rig is like a, is like a, is yeah, like a yeah, yeah. camera manufacturer that, that, that makes like professional camera cages, cages and Cages and stuff. For, yeah. Uh, honestly, though, like... Uh, like again, I like to take pictures on my iPhone. I, I I think that it takes really good pictures for being such a small sensor because it processes it really good. Even at nighttime, like I might prefer to take a picture on my phone than take it on my camera because I know that the night mode's so good. So like, uh, I think that an iPhone 13 could be a fantastic content machine. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, Will, do you have a favorite waffle maker, or am I remembering uh, wrong? Says just the vagabond. Yeah, no, it's the. I was actually just looking it up. It's the Breville waffle maker that I have. It's uh, yes, it's OTT as the kids say, but it yeah, makes you know great me. waffles. Yep. Uh, Breville, we like Breville here. Uh, they make yeah. a good espresso maker. And Mega Dragon with forty one bits. Have the rest of my bits for the week, bros. Awesome podcast as always. By the way, Bob, my drawing skill is getting better now. Thanks for the encouragement. Thank you for the bits and the support of this channel. I appreciate it, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. No, do the thing. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can watch it on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast. Your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores. Micro Machines. That was incredible. Uh, guys, thanks for being here on this long, weird podcast where we did a lot of things at once. Uh, I hope it was entertaining for you for the most part. Uh, I will be back on Thursday. I think I'm going to finish the Water Temple. I started it for the first time the other day. What a bitch and a half, Will. That fucking thing is they, so dumb. They do say that is the worst part of the game. Uh, yeah. I did it blind without help. I didn't even look anything up. I, 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 we were timing people out in the chat who said anything about it. Yeah. Um, and it sucked. And I, I had to beat dark link with no tools. I just mashed through it and eventually I beat it. Jeez. Um, anyway, uh, who shall we raid? How about wood? Everybody, he broke a switch. Apparently everybody go watch wood. Oh uh, boy. Uh, maybe you can help him fix his switch. And I'll see you later. Who knows what my video is going to be on this week. Make sure you watch my last week's video because nobody did. Goodbye. Bye.
try again tomorrow, maybe. 